Hello everyone, before we get started on this week's episode, just a quick word that YouTube in all its infinite wisdom has decided that some of the Die Party games are now not suitable for advertising. It doesn't mean a whole lot for the content. I'm not going to censor the videos in any way, but if you'd like to lend your support so that Die Party can continue to grow, please check out the Patreon or subscribe on the Twitch channel. Enjoy the episode. Hello everyone, welcome back once again to Die Party LA at Night, a weekly vampire masquerade role-playing game right here on Twitch. We've just stepped into the, uh, the, um, you know, the, uh, the Indian reservation. Uh, you can hear the sounds of our native wind chimes going off in the background at all times. Uh, so, uh, without further ado, um, Mother Nature has literally called. And it's time for us to introduce our players. Dr. Thomas. I hey. hear you're a person on this show. It's true. I am person. Hear me roar. Whoa. Hold, uh, up. Hold up. Hold up. I don't think we're that close yet. Oh, okay. But hey, well, what up? I am here. Uh, I'm ready to vampire. Should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I haven't been up to too much... Just uh, work stuff, life stuff, uh, uh, doctor stuff. Uh, I lost insurance, so I need to get new insurance. So I'm like being very careful <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah. You, look, uh, man, you can always go to Canada if you have problems. Um, just drive up there, get some, get, some, uh, yeah, get some stuff and come back. Yeah, just pay a little bit money. You'll be fine. It's good. Yeah, be fine. Be fine. Uh, but yeah. Good stuff. I'm ready for vampires. Fuck yeah, man. Fuck yeah. Speaking about being ready for vampires, I asked this man a couple of days ago, uh, you know, if he was, you know, constantly intoxicated with the amount of blood he's been drinking, you know, as practice. And he told me that, uh, you know, fruit boxes aren't enough for him anymore and he needs extra. Brian, Spooty, is that true? Is that what you said to me? Can you confirm? That? I need more blood. It's true. The juice box don't cut it no more. <laughs> Damn it. Damn. And actually, funnily enough, what I'm drinking is from a box. Whoa. It's, it's the adult fruit box. That's it's the adult fruit box. It's we, the adult fruit box. We, we keep it in our cabinet above the kitchen counter, so when you open up the door, mm. it's like an adult vending machine. Mm. Yeah. It's like a glass under it and... Press a button. Aged, aged, it's fine wine aged in uh, <laughs> cardboard and plastic. Cardboard and plastic. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, you make jokes about box wine. It's actually pretty fucking good. It's box wine has come a long way since my mother kept her Chardonnay in the fridge in 1993. Mm -hmm. Ooh, mm. yeah. I'm sure it's like it's fine. I just remember back in college when people would be like, "Oh man." You got a box of wine, bro. Yeah. Like, College, oh, dude. I was you're a badass, that, aren't you? I was, I was drinking that shit when I was fourteen. Come Look on, at man. you. You got a box of Ooh, wine. Oh yeah. yeah. See, we we call them we call them. Uh, it's a little offensive, but we call them a gin's handbag. Um, because you know, drunk ladies would be walking around with it like a handbag, and it's just the bla uh, the bladder of the box filled with wine. Is like, uh, uh, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's some good shit. Good shit. Uh, what have you been up to, Brian? That's, uh, not much, man. Uh, still on the Destiny 2 kick and, Damn. uh, oh, I started playing, uh, uh, a game called Tooth and Tail, which yep. is like a... My friend Andy yeah. made that. It's, uh, it's oh, a really? Game. It's, yeah. it's fucking good. It's, mm -hmm. it's really good. Actually. He's the guy that made Monaco. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. Made it's... Another game, so. It's super fun. It's like a it's kind of funny easy last... to control real time strategy game. Yeah, it's... Um, Pardon me. <laughs> and it's done in sort of like an old school art style, which is nice. Yeah, and it's all animals, so it's pretty sweet. Mm, mm. He he wanted it originally to be like a like oh god I can't remember, but um, it's it's kind of funny because the last guy like there's two people that made it. Both their names are Andy. 
Um, <laughs> so it, it's kind of weird talking to the both of them, but one of the guys' name is Andy Schultz. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, he's he, since he made Monaco, he's like, you know, whatever. A bunch of people know him. Um, and uh, <laughs> he once hosted a, an award show at a game event. And his mm -hmm. introduction music was shot, 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 shot. I don't Come know. Yeah. It, was, it was dumb. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, Tooth and Tail. Great game. Check yeah. it out. I think it's only like 20 bucks. You know. Uh, totally worth it. You know, you know what? Actually, I was like, I fucking woke up this morning. I had my bachelor party on the weekend, right? So I, I had a pretty rough. Uh, you know, I just needed a lot of sleep, basically. Um, and. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I was going through the news this morning on my Twitter and I was like, what the fuck? Neo's coming to the PC in November. And I'm just like, what the fuck, man? What the, that's yep. the best game of the year is now on the PC. So everyone go get it. It's coming out in November. What the fuck? Like it only came I never out played it. I only watched you play it. Neo. It's the Japanese, um, white man samurai. in Japan, samurai dark souls game. It's fucking Actually, amazing. I played the demo. It's the demo really good. It's so good. Oh, so good. And it's coming with all the DLC and it's going to have better fucking options in the thing. It's, oh, it's going to be so good. I can't wait for that shit. So when you play a game like that on PC, do you use a controller or do you do keyboard and mouse? Uh, when I play Dark Souls, I use a controller. Yeah. But you know, I yeah. mm -hmm. literally can't even find anything about this game. N-I-O-H. N-I-O-H. Yeah. Niho. Got it. Neo. No, Neo. Neo. N-I-O-H. That's why I didn't find anything. It's, it's fucking awesome. It's like, if I had to put a top 10 game to the 2017 list together, that would be like right at number one. Because it, was, it, was, right. it was fucking perfection in gaming. Couldn't believe it. Um, so I'm, gonna, I'm definitely buying that. It comes out on November 17th. That's like a month away, man. That's like, it's not even More that. than a month. Well, just a little <clears throat> bit, but still. Fuck, man. That surprised me because they just like, yep. Month and a half, actually. Yeah. It's, it's, oh, yeah. yeah, and I tried out the new digital Final Fantasy IX. It's, hmm. I mean, it's weird. It's nice to see the, the sprites and actually see what the characters look like because you couldn't do the old <laughs> version. <laughs> But what they did was they took the UI from because I also have it on my on my cell phone because I kind of like that game. But what they did was they took the UI from the cell phone and are utilizing it on the TV. And the UI from the cell phone takes up half the fucking screen when you're when you're in a battle. Hmm. So it's like, why did you do that? It doesn't make sense. And it is kind of weird hmm. seeing it on a big TV because like Final Fantasy IX had those beautifully like hand drawn backgrounds and everything like that. And with the new sprites juxtaposed in front of those, it actually makes it, I don't know, weird. It's weird. Hmm. But, hmm. Eh. I mean, I'm still going to fucking play it because it's like <laughs> my third yeah, favorite Final Fantasy game. Yeah, 9 was really good. Speaking yeah, of that. weird video game animations, to segue into my, uh, what I'm going to talk about. Oh, yeah. um, hey, Rickage. Every... The GM what? for the game. Rickage. Yeah, what I am. Hey. Uh, Sorry, Tyler Rickage. Everybody, like this is this is one hundred percent not like dudes. I found this niche game that nobody's heard about. Like every single person ever is talking about. Oh, Grand Theft Auto, Cuphead, oh. Cuphead. Oh, that the, finally came out. Um, yeah. <laughs> amazing looking, very fun to play. Walt very Disney filled S with character, like mm -hmm. very filled with life. Game. It's they nailed so, that art style. It is. It is such a complete like. They set out to do a specific thing, and they 100% succeeded at doing that thing. Um, it's like it's an amazing game. Uh, it is also twenty dollars, just like Tooth and Tail. So you should definitely go pick that up if you're looking for a twenty dollar game. It's also fucking stupid hard, I hear too. It is a difficult game. It like, is. Like, it is like a. It's a boss game. Like you literally just go from boss to boss. There aren't levels. Yeah, it's like um, um, I heard it's like um, like Galica, but like fucking stupid hard in a lot of cases i mean it is it is uh like you your character is a dude who shoots and you can do a bunch of things to change the way that you shoot 
Um, but it's great because when you shoot, you're holding your finger like a finger gun, which is because it's because it's Walt fantastic. Disney. So you're going. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. <laughs> um, and uh, it, but most of the bosses aren't shooting back. It's usually like like what whatever their shtick is. It's usually something shtick. like there's a couple that try and run into you or punch you. And there's like there's one that's a there's one early on that is a giant slot machine and you have to pull the lever and then depending on what comes up like a puzzle starts moving across the screen and it's a particular puzzle based on the result of the slot machine hmm. um, and it's like they're all so full of character and they're all very different um, in particular there was one there's one in the second zone where you fight a genie and they have a rotoscoped model of like a pyramid with a maze around it rotating in the background the whole time as if and it's like it looks just like out of the things they used to do in in like 30s animation yeah. it, it's it's so gorgeous yeah. um so that's the game that i'm going to talk about now i'm going to talk about die party la at night um last <laughs> <Why>? week <laughs> Why? 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 Uh, why? Yeah, why? Uh, why? Uh, la- last week, um, Amethyst uh, has had, you know, uh, she's cooled down a little bit, and she she decided that the best thing now is not to dick around with you and maybe accidentally get everybody killed. Um, but instead, like, let's just get something done and actually secure your guys' vote of Elysium so I can stop babysitting you um and to that end she told you about the kuijin uh who are a yet another faction of vampires in this case the mystical orient vampires um i'm gonna preface this right now because we might be seeing more from them this episode we might not depends on what the characters do uh world of darkness vampire the masquerade was written in the 90s um it does not have a politically correct view. <laughs> the 90s were not kind to ethnicities. No, it does not have a politically correct view of, like, uh, the mystical Orient. Um, the Kui Jin are a bad stereotype. And more than that, the Kui Jin control both the Chinese maf- mafia and the Japanese Yakuza with no distinction. So the book would have me throw, like, both Chinese gangsters and Japanese Yakuza at you and call them both Yakuza. What is this, cyberpunk? (laughs) It's like... And it's... So, I want you, the viewer, to be aware that I am personally aware that there is a very sharp distinction between China and Japan. The way that the Kui Jin are written prevents me from actually demonstrating my own awareness because they will be blending yeah. basically everybody in the... I think I made a joke last week about you not doing that, but I didn't realize that it was... If, if that was the case, then I take it back, but I don't yeah. know. Really, like. <laughs> no, I, I want you guys to be like acutely aware that I know there's a distinction between not just China and Japan, but even segments of China and Polynesian islands and like, like all of that stuff, like yes. Korea and Vietnam. And they're all very culturally distinct, just not in world of darkness. Yes. Um, in, in the world of darkness, they are just the East. And now these Eastern vampires are going to show up and they're going to be all about chi and God. fucking, yin and yang and stuff it's gonna be but they're also really interesting just not culturally accurate so that's why they're i'm they're still in my game because they're super interesting they're just not culturally culturally accurate is is it is it kind of like the whitewashing in fucking um uh the 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 uh iron fist comics and stuff like that no like, it's just really bad stereotyping okay like right. like it's just really bad stereotyping and like boiling all of these different cultures into one like mono thing because like the kui jin aren't different if they're from japan or china okay. they're all the same and they're all like my chi and my enlightenment and my yin and yang and they have different like versions of that could you which... theoretically join the kui yin um kui jin uh, by being just enlightened instead of just being Asian, 
Is that possible? Uh, no, but you'll find out why if you learn more about the Cohesion. <clears throat> okay. Well, uh, they are a Irish uh, police officer in the 1990s. Well, here, here's the thing about the Kui Jin. I'll just, act, <laughs> I'll actually, I'll actually just say this now. The Kui Jin are a faction and a bloodline. So they don't have other vampires in. They don't have members who are any other bloodline. Hmm. So you can't join them under like like they're. But they are could they the theoretically bring in someone that is like if I was to be like if we started this game again I'm like wreckage Kui Jin let's go and you're like okay like would that like yeah I mean you could theoretically do whatever you want but like do they have a history of taking in more than just the no. stereotype no okay no well they they literally can't like I said they're a bloodline like they may sire you like that might happen well then again. Uh, okay, so another thing about the Kuijin is that they were much like La Sombra. Mm. You, you know how there's some wonky things with how La Sombra work? Because originally the Kuijin were just villains and just written as villains. Yep. Then eventually they did a splat book that supposedly revealed more stuff about yeah, well, them. Yeah, La Sombra were a villain as well, right? Mm. Like you couldn't, yeah. you couldn't play and then, them. Yeah. yeah, and then eventually it was like people want to play as the Sabbat. So the same thing happened with the Kuijin. In between them being villains and them being a playable splat book, the playable splat book was written by a different guy. I may, I may be wrong. It's kind of like here. how if you go it was to play written... Vampire: The Masquerade Bloodlines, you can only play the heroic bloodlines in that game, right? You couldn't, you couldn't play like. The, the point I'm trying to make guys. is the splat book went into what's really going on with the Kui Jin, and it was completely different from everything we'd heard about them previously. Um, mm -hmm. Like, it went off on its own, like, crazy tangent adventure and really radically changed what they were, like, trying to make it its, like, really own thing. Um, and I believe I'm right in saying that popular opinion is that version of the Kui Jin did not land. You know, people didn't like it. Um, so they use the rules from the splat book and then just take the Kui Jin as what they were ahead before, like what, like what we thought they were and what we, the, the preconceived notions people had. Um, we might get into it, um, but you might actually not learn anything about the Kui Jin. So, you know, maybe we won't. Um, just wanted to preface that they are not a culturally sensitive entity. So, and I'm going to represent them as the way they are written. Plus, I also want to point out last week, I, um, I made a stereotype that uh, I couldn't work computers, so I used two fingers. So if we're doing stereotypes, I mean, I did that one. So yeah, because you're because you're well, you're an old person, right? Uh, old, well, you're an old person and an Irish, adult in the 90s. And, and yeah. I used um, I used post-it notes still. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm entitled to typing with two fingers. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, speaking of buying people time to watch, I'm supposed Arrow to. Arrow is in. Yes. Oh, fine. he's in. Yeah. Okay. Fine. All right. Well, I I'm saw, supposed I, to. I sorted. Him. I sorted it. It's fine. We got it. Look. We down. I. Duh. We down. We down. Okay. Dude. I didn't see him say anything. I do. I see him now. I scrolled up. All right. I was busy <laughs> on my uh, uh, cultural tirade. Um, so. Uh, Cultures Last is a week, manifestation in scientists' minds. Okay. So Amethyst took you to a known, like bad guy shipping, uh, office in Chinatown. Die hard bad guy location. Right. You went to the bad guy's building office, um, which was a quest marker on your map. You broke in. Uh, Braden botched a search roll, found a shiny red button that I in no way compelled him to push, and he pushed it. Um despite everyone in the party begging him not to because he asked before he did it and everyone said don't except for rodney is um, there a I vampire think my thrill seeker nature forced my character to push that button. I, I don't know about that i have thrill seeker as well i told you not to fucking push that so <laughs> I, if you had like curiosity as a um nature or demeanor hubris or curious, we can say it we're all adults no. <laughs> uh like then that totally would have gotten you a willpower. I'm, I'm not so sure about other things. We'll see. Um, Damn. The uh, 
the nothing happened for the longest time. You did some exploring of the building. You got upstairs to a computer where, like a video game, you had found the password elsewhere. Um, Amethyst used Celerity to very quickly download everything on the computer onto uh, a floppy disk. Again, this was top-notch technology. It's video gamey, but also it's like... You see, you know, in, the, in the 90s, computers were as fast as the inputs could carry them. So as long as you had a faster <laughs> input than anyone else... The computer would keep up. Well, actually, Celerity is actually based on a time-based power. So, <laughs> so she created a time <laughs> bubble around herself and the computer, and then she was actually just using one finger instead of two. <laughs> I got this, fam. There actually is a section in the book where it's like Celerity and physics. <laughs> Some so, Celerity and you. <laughs> uh. Sometimes celerity would cause some people to spontaneously combust from the mere friction. Remember that celerity is based in a time power. Any time physics, you know, wouldn't work, just just hand wave it away. Um, <laughs> Wait, the Halo. file is in the computer. <laughs> what is this? A fucking Hashtag Zoolander. <laughs> what is this? A fucking no. <laughs> Academy for Ants. How now, I wanna see, uh, <laughs> now I want to see. Now I want to see a like a fifties style PSA about like becoming a vampire. Oh, hey. man, like a whole Fallout 4 thing about, like, celerity in you. Hey, little Timmy, looks like you just became a vampire. Boy, howdy, I did. Remember to use caution. <laughs> well, let's, see, let's see if that uh, in enthusiasm stays for the next 35,000 years. <laughs> if, a, if a bruja is enraged, duck and cover. <laughs> you are now immortal, which means you will never die. But By natural you causes. Have a you have a curse. Your clan curse will haunt you for the rest of your days. Your curse oh, could be your curse could be as benign as a particular person you have to feed from, or as malevolent as voices in your head that compel you to kill all the time. <laughs> Seriously, can yeah, I would I, I'd be okay, one hundred percent okay with a fallout like fucking like 90s sitcom cartoon vampire the masquerade game like <laughs> like the war happened in the night in the 1970s and like the vampires are just like anyway <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, that'd be so good you, you can basically take any other game and say what too happens many vamps too like, many vamps you can take any scenario that involves like an apocalypse or whatever and then just like staple over it. What if that apocalypse happened in the world of darkness? How are the supernaturals getting along like afterwards? Um, <laughs> and you can pretty much make a game out of all of that. So you could do like, what if Fallout happened in the world of darkness? <laughs> Vamp boy. <laughs> <laughs> Vamp boy. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, in the world of darkness, Bat Boy was real. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, you push the button, you download all the files on the computer into a uh, floppy disk that I described as rotating and floating in her hand like an obvious video game pickup. Nice. Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. uh, 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 right. <laughs> uh, before, you, you also like went around and broke into other offices to make it so they wouldn't know exactly which office you broke into. Yeah. Um, uh, then... The uh, the combined Chinese and Japanese Yakuza slash Mafia showed up. <laughs> um, the Taco that, Bell Pizza Hut. Yeah, the Taco <laughs> Bell Pizza Hut. <laughs> um, they uh, they just surround the building and did that really ominous like our car headlights are just you know, for silhouettes and fucking. Um, and Braden was like, I sit here with my legs up. In defiance. Um, but then he, uh, you guys called down the elevator and were like, shit, we got to go. Let's go from a higher story. And Braden made a, an illusion so he could go into the elevator um, without being seen as going into the elevator. Um, and now you guys are in the elevator with a plan to go to a higher story and presumably use vampiric powers in some way to just leave the building on a level that uh, the Yakuza are not expecting and probably can't I, prevent. I did practice throwing myself off 
the roof of progressively higher buildings. There you you did do that. Uh, I do have Daredevil, come... which might actually happen for the first time in <laughs> 15 weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, Maria, yeah. what are you going to do? What's your game mechanic that you're going to use to get out of this building? Um, I'm going to parasol by making my arm into an umbrella and float down like Mary Poppins. <laughs> yeah, I just Mary Poppins out of the building with a flesh umbrella. <laughs> right, anyway, um, so you're in the elevator, uh, and uh, now would be a great time to talk about the actual plan here. Like, how many stories up are you going to go? Um, how many... Like, are you going to try and leave from a office level or a residential level? Because remember, there are apartments here. Um, like, are you are you going to just try and leap, or do you want to find like where a power line or a telephone line or you know, even just a clothes line is strung in between buildings? How close are the buildings around here? It's very slummy. Um, Could we potentially go to the roof and jump to another building? Uh, that is a potentiality. Um, I think the most, uh, I think the most, uh, uh, the biggest obstacle to that is that this building is the tallest building in its immediate vicinity. Um, I don't know, which... just do a roll when you land, you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just gotta hit roll, roll, roll at the exact right time. Mm -hmm. Um, hut, 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 hit. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um so Amethyst is gonna say Alright, so what's the plan? Well, we could just jump out of a fucking window and run for it. Yeah, but if we just land among them, they'll use their vehicles and keep up with us are and they, also have show they surrounded them that we have the entire just, yeah, building? Say, is the building surrounded? Yeah, the building's surrounded. Sure. Okay, alright. Um, and like like the at like the front of the building opened into sort of a, a square, like I described before. The other three sides of the building are like alleys and stuff, and they've got those could like I, could, surrounded and lit. Could I? Is the tentacles, can, can they support weight? To what end? Can I, like, like I don't know, uh, zip line down one of my tentacles to another building? No, because no? the tentacle okay. isn't long enough. Um, I mean, I could put enough blood into it to make it as long as I want. No, you can only make it slightly bigger once, and that's the limit. Um, um, yeah, well, at least for no, at least for at least for about an hour. <laughs> if it lasts longer than four hours, ah, yeah, it's longer than four hours. Ah, <laughs> ah, let me just check. Hang on. Fifty we minutes all... and six seconds to the first <laughs> dick joke. Great, we did it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> we did it, Reddit. Yeah, <laughs> made it almost to an hour. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, so, so I can't. I can't do that. Okay. Under sun, like under a, a particular like weird circumstance, you could maybe make some sort of uh, line of tentacles. But the problem is that like you'd need to be able to spawn another tentacle in the middle somewhere, but mm -hmm. you can't. Like. Um, I guess each tentacle like, is six feet, two meters long. Um, vampire chooses you may spend a blood point to increase a single tentacle's strength or dexterity by one, or to extend its length by another six feet or two meters. So, yeah, I guess I don't know. Like that, like a twelve foot gap you could do is basically what that's saying. Mm. Um, and I would, I would definitely allow that. Um, there, what yes, if what the, if I make gap like a, between buildings is not twelve feet? What if I make like a pulsating mass of tentacles on the other building and we land on it, like a trampoline? I don't think it would be any um, cushier than landing on anything else. I don't know. The it, tentacles it, aren't it, like, they're, like they're not um, squishy. They're like hard and muscular and and well, not even muscular. They're like think of them almost more like. Um, <laughs> Like obsidian or something, you know. Go I, just, on. I can't. I can't. They're like they're like veiny, you know. <laughs> they're like veiny, and they're not veiny. Imagine them I having just, blood in them and muscle. This whole you know? line of conversation is fucking ridiculous. 
Look, you're making it worse than I'm it is. I'm like point... 12 years old. I, I can't help it. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to mute myself. The point is, because the tentacles have... A, we have a we have a known quantity for their uh, durability. Mm-hmm. Like they're not squishy, mm-hmm. is the point. So they wouldn't be a better landing surface than anything I'm, else. I mean, so... <laughs> a building. <laughs> Where? Which side is the closest to another building? Yeah. Um. Man, if only I could black metamorphose. Are you going to? Are you going to? Are you like going to a specific floor and you're going to check the windows? Like, how are you going to find out? Yeah, which... we'll probably just go. Like, I would say we should just go up like one or two floors and then try to so check. Try to we check could do the there. matrix thing of like jumping from one window. Oh, sorry, not the matrix. Fast and the Furious. We get in like to. We go up to the floor with the car room show. We get in the car. We drive it out the window of one building and into another. Right? Like that's. Does that work? Can we do that? You don't have a car. I know, but can can we can we theoretically throw? Can I throw someone? Actually, I have myself and um, Amethyst can probably throw motherfuckers through buildings. I mean, you could throw people. I mean, couldn't we just jump? Yeah, but yeah, like you don't overthink things here. the The question isn't like so much how; it's mm. what. No, yeah, I mean, yeah. That's that's why I was trying to say. Like, is there a side that has a building that's particularly close? Mm -hmm. that we could like try to get to all right so Um, if you just go to the third floor um the third floor is residential but uh like either end of the hallway Mm -hmm. uh has a window just you know for the hallway um and you can you can take a peek out um the uh what you can see is that there the window to your uh, west, we'll say, uh, mm-hmm. that building is uh, itself is only like three stories tall and is wide and long. Um, so it has a it has a huge surface on it to jump to. Um, but like you'd have to go a couple stories higher to jump to it. But also um, only being three stories tall like they looking out the shoot. window you could just yeah well well looking at the window nobody is looking up but there are so many of them like there's a lot of people who showed up for some reason mm-hmm. not like this isn't just some dudes this is like a the camera yeah, yeah, yeah. zooms back down to the button under the desk looks straight up and it says milkshakes it brings <laughs> all the boys to the yard um <laughs> this is all the boys damn it uh, got it so <laughs> If you were to only jump to this three-story building, which would be very easy and also, like, give you a lot of leeway for moving afterwards, there would be a risk of being seen yeah, and yeah. turning it into... Well, as- I was going to say, if we can find one that's, like, particularly close, um, uh, Miss, Fast Fe- Miss Fast Feet could use Celerity, get something and throw it out one of the other windows and then rush back to us. We let them be like, oh, hey, they jumped out the window! And, like, go around... Uh, and like, I don't oh, know if hey, I should there's... be offended or what with that accent. It was a weird, out. like, Icelandic thing. It was like a Mexican <laughs> thing almost. Like, hey, hombre, da, da, da. Arriba, arriba. <laughs> right. Uh, um, so, so, so basically, basically cause a distraction. So they could be like, oh, hey, like, they, they, they jumped out that side, and then we actually jump out that side. Oh, that's okay. Do you suggest that plan? Yes. I think that's a good idea. That's, I that's mean, some sort of plan. distraction, right? It's yeah, not like we like, don't so have a like, guy that, that Amethyst can't. says that's perfect, and then she kicks in the door of this apartment that's right here. Okay, uh, <laughs> and then there are some screaming people inside. <laughs> there's there's um, a fat guy watching TV in his underpants, like with a tub of ice cream <laughs> on his belly, being like, uh, "Why are there so many fat guys sitting in their underpants watching TV in this world?" It's actually Stephen uh, <laughs> Wolf again. He's just like, "This is his actual uh, home. So, <laughs> this is where uh, I live." There's a Chinese family in here, and Amethyst proceeds to kill them. Whoa! Like, just what? necks snapped. Whoa! And she starts topping up, too. Anybody a little hungry? Whoa! Whoa! I have no problem. I, I, I mean, I could eat, but Jesus Christ. Yeah, well, there's plenty of blood here. They're dead I, we already. We didn't Don't have to kill about. them. No, this is the perfect... I'll throw their bodies through the window to that other building. There's chairs! Chairs aren't people. I'm gonna I'm gonna fill up wreckage. I have no qualms about. I hate this. No, I'm gonna I, say I like this. 
killing minorities. But that's fine. Like, like we can. I, feel, I, uh, I don't. I feel super weird about this now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll eat. I need uh, some blood. Um, uh, you guys can each get six blood from being fine with. Oh, that, that'll put on me up to full. I guess so completely. Uh... Oh, hello. <laughs> then the mother nature. Uh, <laughs> Gaia is calling. <laughs> Yes, Gaia. What is your bidding? Kill oh them man, all. Captain Planet RPG. Fuck that. I don't want anything to do with that. <laughs> no, no. be great. No, Next show. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the. Mm. But everyone's vampires I, as well. But everyone's also vampires. So I mean, basically, Werewolf the Apocalypse is supposed to be Captain Planet the show. <laughs> um, like for real. Yeah, it's all about fighting an evil megacorp that's trying to pollute and destroy the planet, and you're fighting, <laughs> liter you're fighting literally for Gaia, okay, the we, spirit of we the need Earth. to do that. That needs to. Can happen. I be heart? Heart. No. So unlike Captain Planet, where you fight with cartoony uh, for the five elements, one of which is heart. Um, in mm -hmm. Werewolf: The Apocalypse, you fight with uh, five werewolf forms. One of which is heart. Heart. What, no, no. <laughs> all of which, all of all which of are, are heart. All of which are uh, tear people apart. <laughs> Damn. In various Earth, flavors. Fire, and wind, speeds. water, mutilate. <laughs> yeah. No. Basically. Um, so um, she's like, yeah, you guys uh, like go another story up, right? Um, you go east. I'll huck them through here to the west building. And they'll never expect it. We'll, we'll huck them, then there'll be a delay while they freak out, and then we'll go east when everybody starts My going over family. there. My family! Yeah. Uh, Alright, yeah, go on. I'll meet you there. Like, two stories up to go to the building to the east? Yeah, yeah, that I guess. Sounds yeah. good to me. Let's go. Uh, back in the elevator. do, 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 do. I really, I, I used to really like the song before they turned it into this shit. You know? Rodney's there and he's like, um, I would like to pump some blood into my dexterity and my stamina. Sure. For jumping out of buildings. <laughs> Yep. So what is, what, like is what is dexterity used for in terms of jumping out of buildings? Landing on a building? Mm, I, I I mean the jumping itself will be a death uh, dex athletics roll. <laughs> a death roll. A dex, death roll. Dex. Okay. I drank white when you right when you said death roll. <laughs> uh, can potence come into that at all, or is that like a? It can, yes. Okay. <laughs> because it's you know, it, super strength can help you leap better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in that case, I will, I will, I will, um, I will pump uh, one into dex and one into stamina because I don't want to break my entire spine into my face when I land. Sure. I can fix yeah. it. It's true. Maybe. My spine is backwards for some reason. It's like, I can't believe this one. You, have no, you, you haven't practically applicated those powers yet, but you'll be sure really you... good at running backwards. Theoretically, you can. Um... <laughs> Brayden, are you gonna, are you gonna uh, pump some blood, my man? Uh, I mean, I have pretty good decks. Now, it, Wreckage, remind me, with my jumping off buildings, did that increase my fortitude by one? Uh, no, not yet. No, not you're, wor you're working. You spent, it, yeah. you spent like a day, maybe doing it. Like, uh, okay. Um, so you said it was gonna be a dex and what? Athletics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna pump. Uh, what is it? I'm pump one blood for one dot in athletics. Is that how it works? No, no, no. Yeah. Only, only attributes. Just attributes. Just, just attributes. your physical attributes. Oh, you can fuck. only do it into dex. Well, it's just it goes into the same pool, bro. Yeah, uh, that's true. So, what is it? One blood for a dot? Yep. Yeah, and you can spend... Well, I guess it, it, we're doing, I, a, few, I I, I assume we're doing a few turns, so it's... You're, like, you're prepping up for it, so you can go all the way up to the maximum here, which, which is... Which is five, five, right? Yeah. I yes? Five? Yeah, I think it's five. five yeah. All right, I'll yeah, pump I'll do, two yeah. blood into decks. We're not, to um, five. 
we're, we're not ancient vampires. We can't go higher than five. Right, yeah. Yeah, but I think it has something to do with, like, anyway, yeah, five. It's like, yeah, yeah. You um, might be right there. There might be, like, a soft limit mm -hmm. for, like, how much you can grow, but, like, maybe... Like, because it would seem weird that if you have five dots in dexterity and then you pump blood into making your dexterity better, you wouldn't be able to do it. That seems weird to me, but, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not, sure, I'm not sure what the... So, you guys get to the, like, the fifth floor. Um, Ding! And Rodney oh, just sort of there. walks out casually. Then he goes right up to one of these. Uh, it's another apartment building. Um, mm -hmm. He just kicks the door in. There's a dude there. Why are? Why do we keep? Uh, this is the best window for it. Hi. We don't have to. Hi. Yeah, I, like, I, I just, I, I just, I just flash my police badge at him, and I'm just like, "Calm down, police business. Go back to eating your chocolate whip." Um. I am going to refrain from attempting to emulate it, but he starts blathering at you in Chinese. Um, okay. Clearly, like emotionally, he's not satisfied with you. Okay, you that. know what I do? I go to the kitchen. I take out some duct tape because you know houses have duct tape. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yep. There's duct tape there. You turn around, and Rodney's just feeding on him so that the guy passes out and forgets everything. And then he looks at you and is like, I, "I'm holding the. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, and I'm like, turn around. I'm just like, oh yeah, the, yeah, that 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 fucking works. I completely forget. <laughs> 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 um, so uh, Rodney takes you to what is almost like a porch window like it's a it's a larger window that's on this apartment these this building is cobbled together it doesn't have anything standard across um uh so like this really is the best window to jump out of to this other building um unfortunately the other building is is taller than this but there is um it has these large on every floor, the uh, there isn't a window there. There is a large porch, like a, like a, a, a full. Like level. we can land on a on the outside before the window of the building, sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, like well, like yeah, like you're going to be breaking into another building and mm -hmm. cutting through. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's probably even better. Um, so you're going to be leaping from building to building, which is literally Damn. a dare. Yes! Yeah. Come on, motherfucker! Um, it's paying off. I took gives, I took two floors what? to get this shit. Let's go. <laughs> which uh, which uh, which gives you how much of a benefit here? Oh, okay. Let me read it out for you, so everyone is on the same playing yep. field. Um, 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 where is that fucking shit? This book, man. Okay, character creation getting started. Blah 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 blah. Just control F Daredevil. Yeah, that's probably pretty quick though. I'll control if you're Daredevil. Damn. Sexy, I think. Got him! Okay. You are good at taking risks and even better at surviving them. When attempting an exponentially risky non-combat action, such as leaping from one moving car to another, characters with this merit may add an additional three dice to their rolls and negate a single botched die that may result from such a roll. Generally, such sessions must be at least difficulty 8 and have at least a potential to inflict three levels of damage if failed. Um, so, I, I wasn't going to increase the difficulty of this task at all, but if if Dave is going to use Daredevil, I have to make it difficulty 8. So it's difficulty 8. Um, <laughs> one of Bet Henley will succeed in botching this. But I can take away botches, so it's yeah. good. <laughs> you can take away one botched dice. Which you can still botch, like. Okay, here think... we go. Let's do Wait, it. Wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> let's 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 get there narratively. Um, Amethyst, you hear the shatter, mm -hmm. um, and, and like those of you with auspex also hear three dull thuds, yeah. um, three sort of wet rags uh -huh. you know, thrown against a, a wall. Um, mm. You know, it's uh, kind of actually inspiring because, like, uh, you know, in death we're all the same. We're all just wet rags being thrown against the wall, man. <laughs> then Rodney tokes. Rodney's like, deep, man. Deep. <laughs> uh, so, um, 
there's like a pause and then you start hearing commotion and like downstairs you hear people moving and um they don't break the like encirclement but basically everybody who is not strictly there for the encirclement is moving over there right you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah, like yeah. the cars that are blocking the alleyways don't peel in yeah because uh, they don't know how many people there are mm -hmm. um but like everybody's heading for that building um and then as soon as like the crowd moves on or, like amethyst is standing next to you it's like all right let's go let's do it Who, does anybody need help does anybody need to be tossed like a dwarf <laughs> I'm already making a jump wreckage. All right. Uh, no um, hesitation from me. Let's go. Dex Athletics. Your pool mod is plus three. The difficulty is eight. All right. De uh, hang on. Okay. Dex Athletics. Athletics. Pool mod is plus three. Difficulty eight. <laughs> I removed the box. Jeez, no I horizon. get a success. We good. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, he removes one botch dice. Um suck it Arisido. <laughs> wait. Wait. Wow, you really didn't Wow, you relied entirely on your daredevil there. Yeah. You didn't um, uh -huh. um I was like, that's how small of a pool you were rolling? Okay, fine. Yeah, that is a success. He removes the one. Has oh, wait. Nine. It's supposed to also include my um, potence, which is well, which is an extra dice, but I didn't add that, so. All right. Well, you're going to make it, so we don't. We don't uh, I don't want to, uh, you know, get another bot just to curse. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait. No, you have to roll that other dice. Damn it. Ah, yeah. You could get a one. Yeah, you could get a, you could get a one. Let's see uh, how this 1d10 pans out folks huh. there we go okay. oh, oh my uh, god uh, we good man what up dead <laughs> <laughs> oh by the skin of your teeth um and, and literally by the skin of your teeth like you leap without thinking in a very daredevil way uh and you definitely collide with sort of the concrete uh railing of the uh porch yeah. Like you land, you grab, and you scramble in. As but I'm scrambling, like as I'm scrambling, so you just hear this "fuck yeah" <laughs> as I climb up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, uh, I'm awesome. Like, like I like during my police work, I was always the guy that used to chase people across like, um, like fences and shit oh, like, like that. Like fences. Yeah, yeah, I was that guy, you know. And right. then it's just like I'm just cool. gonna get in the car cool. and drive around. Cool. And then the last time you do a full front foot, <laughs> that would be so good. Yeah, I was that guy on the police force, right? The go-getter, <laughs> the one that was willing to jump across buildings because he had, right. he had. So you're like, yeah, fuck yeah, 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 mm, fuck yeah. yeah, this is it, yeah. <laughs> um, so Amethyst follows with that. So does anybody else want to get tossed? Uh, like so is it is it going to be difficulty eight for all of us? It's going to be difficulty eight for all of you. Okay, yeah, I, I uh, <laughs> Maria like walks over to the edge, looks down. And then looks back, like, scratches back her neck, kind of embarrassed, like, I, if you, yeah, I, I, I probably need some help. You are already sailing through the air. Great! <laughs> and, and, uh, like, um, you, you, you hit perfectly on the porch. In okay. fact, the arc is so perfect that, like, you, you aren't even in danger of hurting yourself. She oh. doesn't throw you super hard. She throws you exactly right. Nice. Um, and then Roddy's like, me next, me next, me next, me next, me, 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 And she tosses him exactly the same, just perfect. Um, I and look then, at her and I'm like, well, and then you and me. And she then... jumps across. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you, you just like, be gentle with me. <laughs> this is my first time. And she's already over the other side. I just can't figure out how to get her to touch me. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Uh, all right uh so i've already got the i don't add anything to my dice pool it's just difficulty eight right <laughs> yeah you should have uh, changed did you bump your dice pool i i did bump my decks up yeah okay yeah so he's got, i'm rolling he's six the, dice. uh do you have uh, resistitude no he doesn't have anything else so he's got the highest dice pool that he could possibly have for this roll difficulty yep. eight. go ahead Brayden. okay i want to also see if i can catch him if it helps 
Hey! What would it take for me to catch him? Um, well, before you rolled, you said so. So, I will let you, um... Uh... Because Brayden's my boy. Out of all the people here, Brayden's my fucking boy, dude. Like... Even after pushing the button? Wait, why is Brayden your boy? Because we've... Okay, we've bonded over talking about, like, blood-related things for manhood. Like, it's canonical, you know? Me and that him, is true. We, we've, we've had our moments, and I'm not going to let right. him fall off a fucking eight-story building. Plus, you know, uh, even if you don't like your partner in the police force, you save his life, dog. Come on. Uh, all right, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Um, this, in order for you to... Uh, and he catch... saved me from Amethyst, too, so there's that, you know? He's my boy. That's true. You know what? That's a valid point. That is a very valid point that you should be like when eventually everyone's like, we need to kill Brayden. He's a liability. You should really bring that up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, th in order to, uh, in fact, I'll let Daredevil come into play here. Um, oh, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> because you're basically going to have to do like um, the I'm holding on to the railing with my toes while I like leap out to catch him type thing. And with the way he like, rolls, I would have to create a new character at this point. <laughs> this is this is exactly the scene from the Matrix where uh, Morpheus Neo. jumps and Neo says he's not gonna make it. Yeah. So he, you know, <laughs> you know, he throws himself. Like you see that Brayden is totally not gonna make it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, this is uh, uh, exact same role. Um, and your daredevil counts, at Damien. Um, exact same role? Okay. So I have yep. to add a plus four instead of a plus three this time. Yep. <clears throat> Pull mod uh, four. Uh, difficulty eight. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm you talking about. You didn't even need about. that daredevil shit. No, I did. Um, <laughs> last three dice were Yeah, yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> the last dice was the only one that succeeded. Yeah. Um, eight, eight difficulties tough, man. Yeah. 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 No matter uh, how many d tens you roll, that's a two in that's a two in ten chance on one dice. Mm -hmm. Three actually, three results are are successes. Whatever the yeah, that's the thing where it's like it's like, but still yeah. When the, when the when the difficulty goes up, there's less chance of succeeding, but your chance of failing is always the same, no matter <laughs> what you're ever rolling. Exactly. <laughs> that was so art. Oh, you... Okay. All the computer. <laughs> big, I love it. Big fat <laughs> floppy disk. I love it. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Thank you, Arisaito, so much. I'll save that. <laughs> Put it with the um, The uh uh speaking of Amethyst, she's already like sliding open one of the uh like uh <clears throat> uh like glass doors into this building. Um Damien and Brayden are literally like doing fucking, you know, uh, what, what's the, uh, what's the most like trapeze? Oh, uh, they're literally like, uh, performing the Lion King right now. Like they're about <laughs> to, they're both about to fall to their deaths and Amethyst is just walking inside the building. Um, <laughs> like someone else is going to have to interact with this for them to recover in 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 mere moments, they must. I'll, 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 Wait, I'll I have move potions. Over and try can, to help I, pull them up. Are you sure that I can't just like lift him up to like have him be carried? You're hanging onto the, the porch by your toes. Okay. You're doing can I that climb thing. Climb up him. Uh, <laughs> Fucker. <laughs> look, the point. The point is that Maria has said yes. I help. So um, with Maria's help, she can pull you both in. Um, Long live the king. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, just, just a scene of uh, Braden falling into us into a fucking ocean of Asian gangsters. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of a stampede, it's just like gangsters with katanas waving. No, it's all, no, it's <laughs> a stampede. It's all just Akira motorcycles. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh god, this game. All right. Right. Um. So, uh, you guys head into the building and like mm -hmm. the, the, the mafia seems to have been correct. Like there's no indication 
that they saw you leap from the previous building to this. Hey, building. these are just dead bodies. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Us. They we they bamboozled us. <laughs> oh, the old corpse bamboozle. Uh. Um. I guess the question is: Do we wait it out here, or do we try to get down and escape from? No, we have to keep moving, says Amethyst. They'll definitely find that they are dead bodies in mere minutes, and then you know they'll know presumably why we did that. I mean, they'll figure it out a little bit. They'll assume it was a distraction. They'll start fanning out. We need to make headway while we can. Good point. But they're not looking in this direction. So honestly, if we just make it to like three blocks over Main Street, blend in with the crowd, they don't know who we're looking for, except for somebody who sat there with his feet up on a desk. Am I still wearing my hoodie? Yep. I'll put my hood up over my head. And be wearing the same clothes. I mean, take the hood off. I mean, put my regular clothes back on. What type of building did we land into? Uh, this is... It's another it... Sears. <laughs> <laughs> if it's someone's Sears apartments, apartments building, I mean, we could just... This is an apartments building. We could just fucking... Make Steal it. clothes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um... I, I will go ahead and say that Damien's already, like, in a wardrobe rummaging through. Yeah, I find, uh, I, like, I throw out a couple of dresses at his feet, and he's like, uh, it's like, all right, found something. And, he like, and you're, like, already putting on the dress. You're like, no. Oh, uh, <laughs> Amethyst is like, you know what? <sighs> you know, just, I, I think they might have seen his face. I think we'll have to go with this. And she pulls a, uh, like, duffel bag out of the closet. So go on, get in. So, so free free ride. Yeah, go ahead, get in the duffel bag. No, I can't see anything uh, wrong with that. Okay, I get in the duffel bag. All right, she zips you in, and then slings you over her shoulder. It's warm. You like Score. it? Score. <laughs> uh, it's tight. You can't really breathe, but you don't have to breathe. You need to fit better. <laughs> That's true. You, you can't get claustrophobic anymore. You're good. <laughs> uh, you can still have claustrophobia. Man, that'd be uh, the worst. As a like a claustrophobic vampire, it's like I ain't getting in that coffin. Mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> Vampires don't have to sleep in coffins. Yeah, but um, you know, in my mind, in my mindscape, right, I believe it. Right, 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 right. Um, uh, so, with those things addressed. There's no need to roll any dice um, any further. Like, you will simply use your leeway to make it to Main Street, and then they didn't see anybody else. Huzzah! Uh, so, minutes later, as you're walking down Main Street, um, there is, like, the ob like, uh, it's very obvious that some mafiosos or Yakuza are starting to, like, stop people on the street and question if they saw anything. But it's like, like they've started to spread out and are asking questions, but it's it's too late. Like they they don't have your deets, so you're yeah just members of the crowd. Yeah, basically I mean, they, they can only ask like, did you see anything weird? Like they can't ask for people. It's just right. I like and, the idea and, that a guy's eating like a fucking a semi alive octopus or like a dead octopus that's been hit with soy sauce that's so still wiggling, and he's just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Are you insinuating man. that eating octopus man. is weird? You racist fuck. No, I eat uh, more octopus than you've probably seen, brother. But that's besides the point. There is like a um a, a dish in Asia that like when you sprinkle it with soy sauce, it like comes alive again. All the all the yeah, it's like bits. a squid or something. Yeah. Right? Um, what the fuck is it? I don't know. I've forgotten. That's nice. It looks cool. I'll see if I can find it. Um. It was that thing in Kill a Kill that she really wanted to eat. She couldn't go to uh, Osaka without having it. You remember? Yeah, yeah. Sucks. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he's talking about. Um, oh, here it is. <clears throat> I think I found it. Yeah. This is it here. Oh, is that the same thing? Yeah. Titans on it. <laughs> Oh my god, is that like super animal cruelty? No, it's dead. 
Then why does it move, Senpai? Because it's, it's <laughs> a so chemical it's, it's reaction. Not, it's, yeah. not, it's not cruel to, like, fuck with a dead carcass or something? But you I, eat I don't it. think so. You I mean, yeah, eat it. as long as it is actually dead. Yeah. Life. Right. That's why that, that put, that's why put it in your will that I can do whatever I want with your body when you die, please. <laughs> oh, right. Uh, that, that, that's why it's, it was okay for us to throw those bodies out of a building. It's sodium. It's, it's <laughs> the sodium. Just dead yeah, it's the sodium in the soy sauce that's making it like bleh, wiggle. Oh, interesting. Anyway, um, no, you, you, I won't put that in my will because I'm never going to die. Uh, uh, that's my plan for getting out of that. Uh, good plan. Uh, the. Uh, you guys will also just like eventually when the heat dies down enough that some a whole group of white people hailing a taxi um like doesn't call suspicion um and uh you hail a taxi and you leave chinatown yeah uh, so we're gonna go to our first break yeah. uh but just before we do uh it's worth pointing out that amethyst tells the taxi to take you somewhere that you weren't expecting. She's having, she's taking you um, not back to the taste or like central LA where you guys have been staying. Um, she's uh, having the taxi go uh, way out to sort of the Northeast fringe of LA. Hmm. Oh, see. see. So, uh, so we'll, uh, We'll, we'll end on that. Uh, so you guys are driving to this uh unknown um place uh well you're not sure where you're going anyway um while you're driving mm -hmm. uh this is one of those you know like seven person taxis or whatever like the band um, things the yeah well it has band? to be Mm -hmm. has to be to fit all of you right you know so um the uh she's in like one of those uh seats towards the front that's sort of by itself a little bit um and uh without looking back she's like so why the fuck did you press that button Braden? I, I mean it was it was it was tempting I, I just wanted to see what would happen. I, I so like is buttons. Vietnamese prostitutes, Braden, but you don't fuck them, all right? You just I, I like buttons. I mess with computers. There was a button, and for all we knew, it opened up like a secret passage or something. I don't know. In the secretary's desk. I mean, why not? Like, the big boss comes in, she's like, hey, big boss, welcome home, and then pushes a button, and then he goes into his... Secret chamber. I don't have, know. Have you seen that the happen I, before? The more I talk about it, the more um, stupid I feel. So can we just move on? Yeah, I'm, really? Do you feel stupid? How stupid? Stupid enough to put myself into a duffel bag that you gave me. Well, it, as long as you realize that you made a mistake and you learn from it, then good. Right. I'll never press a red button ever again. Only green. Well, it's con 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 contextual situation. Ah. Oh, okay, so it wasn't the color. Right. I write that down on my notebook. Other red buttons might be okay, but hidden ones underneath a secretary's desk that probably lead to an alarm, not so good. So I'm going to I'm gonna lean close to Amethyst so that Braden can't hear me a little bit. I'll be like, is it is it possible for, like, dyslexia to come along with vampires like, like can you be a dyslexic vampire it wouldn't cure dyslexia but it what wouldn't cause what what about what about if it's like um can you get it from being bitten by a dyslexic vampire like no 
Okay, just check. He's just a fucking idiot. And dyslexia, dyslexia is like a reading problem. I'm not quite sure. I mean, but, I know yeah. I can't hear what you're saying, but I'm you're not also quite sure a what fucking you're driving idiot. at. Yeah. <laughs> He's also dumb. Is is really what the point is? <laughs> I look, man. Like you, you, you wanting, you wanting me to play this character. I'm playing the character. That's it. As far as as far, well, as, as, far as he's concerned, dyslexia and ADHD, same thing. Great, great. Um, <laughs> Both well, diagnosed the, with the same pill, probably in the nineties, and well. The important thing is we all got out okay. We got something out of. We got something out of it. We got some data. We can use it. So. We're okay. You guys want me to take a look at that data? I mean, I can be somewhat useful. Yeah, you're about to about to prove that. Uh, look, we're going to a friend's house. Okay. Place thing. Uh, here's the important part, though. Uh, in about twenty minutes, I'm gonna need to blindfold all of you. Um, you gonna do that to the driver as well? No. He, he doesn't know that we're, you know, when things are happening. Yeah, it doesn't matter if he knows where we are or going. Oh. So we're not allowed to figure out where we're not allowed to know where we're going or how to, how to, or just how to get there. It, it's the specific location is going to have to be kept secret from you. So, like, the last, you know, five minutes of the car ride and, also getting out of the car. Could I ask why? Yeah, because it's not my place to reveal his haven to other people that he doesn't know. That's fair. Like, it's his call to trust someone with the location? Yeah, okay. Uh, the, uh, so, yeah. And she's like, here's some blindfolds. All right, I Put turn on, on. I turn on Wreckage. Okay, well, you see through a blindfold. I take it upon myself, as a detective. Yeah, to violate the sacred bond of trust between two casual acquaintances. <laughs> That's right. Continue. I wish to use all of my detective prowess and Auspex. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. To identify. The locale yep. of yep. where we are going. No chance. It's just a blindfold. Yeah. I'm also an L.A. cop. Yeah. She's taking you out of L.A., first of all. So you're out of jurisdiction. Um, second of all... Was she, was she taking driving us to L.A. County? Uh, I'm not telling you where she's driving you, but you've left Los Angeles is the point. Um, all right. The um, and the second point is that it's not like uh like a video game where the the sound changes when you're in different towns. Like the backing music doesn't change. So as far as audio, which you're gonna have a great like you're gonna have great audio with Auspex on and also being blindfolded. It's like the only way that it would work is if someone was like. Yes, welcome to Whittier, or whatever. Like, like somebody in the background in the middle of the night to somebody <laughs> else is like, "Yeah, the fine town of La Habra." Uh, Occasionally, this talent may provide exocentric or even precognitive insights. These brief, yep. unfocused glimpses of odd premonitions, flashes of empathy, or eerie feelings or foreboding. The vampire has no control of these perceptions, but with practice, can we learn to interpret them with a degree of accuracy? Expanded senses come at a price. Uh, okay. Uh, what else can I do here with this thing? Um, I mean, sometimes I can say, like, your Auspex is tingling, you have a spidey sense, it's a car. <laughs> your Auspex is back. tingling. Yeah, I could, that's, that's what that line means. It doesn't mean that you can attempt this. It's... I, uh, memorize the turns? Yeah. I suppose that if you memorize the turns from the moment that you're blindfolded, Come on, what, what, what harm does it come from me attempting to do this myself with no... I'm not going to be like, aha, I know where we are. 
Yeah, I know. You push me through a building. I just want to see yeah, if it's, I, I can remember. <laughs> um. Uh. Uh, okay, all right, sure, fine. Uh, we'll make it a difficulty 10, as Erisido suggests. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, what if you fucking 10. nail this? <laughs> um, hold on I'm ready. Second. Perception, investigation. Let's go. It's a difficulty 10, uh, wits, investigation. How is it wits? Because it's not about perceiving the turns, because you're going to. It's about remembering every turn. Um, okay. Auspex is going to make it so that you, this is this is um, this is not a um, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like Auspex means for sure you're going to perceive everything you need. This is about the second you put the blindfold on, remembering every <laughs> willpower turn. and also the distance between turns. Like you're going to have to keep a count. To get the right turn, you're gonna have to keep a one one thousand count. Um, so this is difficulty ten, um, and uh, there's no don't spend a willpower here <laughs> um, because I won't me. count that success. <laughs> um, stop me, motherfucker! All right. Also, there's no botch here. Like I'm not gonna punish you for this attempt, but I, I, yeah, I yeah, say, yeah, she's like. Uh, uh, Amethyst is like, motherfucker, are you memorizing shit? Punches me out the fucking sun. You're memorizing back there. <laughs> Some motherfuckers memorizing back there. I can fucking hear it. Um, are you using your exosensory abilities as a vampire to work out where the fuck we're going? Not on my watch. <laughs> <laughs> fucking halfway no. across LA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did your extra perceptory abilities feel that, motherfucker? Um... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alright. Okay. And uh perception uh, no, you said wits investigation. Wits investigation. Alright. Difficulty pull, ten. Alright, pull mod uh one. Because of uh, aspects. Yep. 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 Um <sighs> Do I dump points into wits to make this possible? You know what? I'm gonna put two blood into wits. You, I don't think you can. Why not? It's well, I think it's you? just physical. Yeah, it's just the physical traits that you can blood really? that you can pump. Yep. So you how, can't make yourself smarter. So they lied in the in the video game when you could fucking put it into things to do lock picking. That's dumb. All right, whatever. Um. Yeah. Well, blood just let you do everything in the video game. Mm -hmm. Like, which was a video think, game. Yeah. It was. Yeah, it was a fine mechanic. It's just like it makes everything better. Um. Okay. But uh, yeah, you can. Ten. Yep. Close. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Um, the, uh, yeah, also Aerocyte was right. Lockpicking is in fact Dex. Um, is it? Bad example. Oh, okay. Um, I always thought it was like larceny. It's Dex. It is. It's Dex larceny. Wait. No, well, okay. It's Dex larceny, not la Wits larceny. Um, so yeah. Uh, does anybody else clandestinely attempt anything while uh, this whole. Please blindfold yourself at this moment, etc., etc., etc. No, no, yeah, I, I put the I blindfold on and I just eye yeah, down sit there. to my cheek. <laughs> okay, I'll blindfold myself and I move my eye to my hand. I'm just gonna put my hand out the window. <laughs> You're ah uh, real monstering it. Yes. <laughs> wow, I haven't thought about that show in like a decade. Thank you. Oh my god. I had food delivered. Pardon me. Ladies and gentlemen, Why while do you I always eat during shows, wreckage. What's up? Because your shows are at fucking dinner time. It 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 is like six right now. It's exactly dinner time. Don't mind me. Um. So nobody else is attempting anything, which means that you will simply comply. She will. Uh, she gives the cab driver a couple extra bucks to not ask any questions. You know, I'm I'm blindfolding everybody. Don't worry sure, about yeah, it. Yeah, I won't tell nobody it's nothing. A, it, it, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a just courtesy a couple extra bucks. Like it's obviously if somebody puts the squeeze on well, it, well, I mean, be like, like yeah, she blindfolded them. She blindfolded them, 
and then she gave him a hand job um as well like, i mean that's how that works right like no we don't know we're blindfolded so you wouldn't know she uses somebody... she uses celerity am i still in a duffel bag <laughs> <laughs> yeah sure why not yeah you're still in the i mean bag. i just instead of being like i get blindfolded and then i slowly zip myself back into the duffel bag but then the then the zip has got like Great. a blindfold over the hole where the zipper bag comes out, <laughs> and it's like okay, I get the idea. But I, I like catch the blindfold in. on the zipper, and it's like stuck, and I'm like struggling with it. You are not still in the duffel bag. Okay. She just wanted to humiliate you for a couple of seconds, not cart you around for the rest of the night. I love <laughs> humiliation. Wow. The thing is, I, Braden's kind of into that though. So a couple of. Uh, she her... to need a hand job without them noticing. <laughs> <laughs> the only way she can really do this is like everybody hold hands, and then she leads the first person, uh, you know, through some doors, down some stairs. You know, it's like you, you walk in an alley for a little while. You're obviously traveling a little while from where you let off the taxi. Is the point? Yeah. Not... What's that? I hear a waterfall. Mm. And those of you with <laughs> drainage pipes. Mm. Those of you with aspects like hear shit um and also with those of you with aspects or those of you who have like allowed your physical senses to be turned on um the air is getting moist hmm. um like really damp um Dang. like beyond the point of humidity uh, and uh then like you hear like a very significant door open like 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 it's not, like like the next area is, it has to be loaded significant yeah, like there's a loading screen, but like also we're about it's... to be assaulted Damn. by like 35 waves of enemies, sort of door loading. Um, and uh, I can hear the door open, but you'll need to hold them off. That's it. <laughs> the elevator's <laughs> coming, the... <laughs> but the ground shaking. God damn wreckage. <laughs> like, <laughs> you said moist and all we can hear is munch, 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 munch. Mmm, vampire sounds. Just guys are just vampire background sounds, don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> now, after you're through the door and okay. the door is closed behind you, she's like, You can take your blindfolds off. Doop, doop, doop. I guess exactly wow. where we were, and I was right. <laughs> You're in a um abandoned fish factory. Tiled room. Damn it. That has a uh like ship vessel hatch door that you guys just came through. Mm. Mm. Um and uh like and when I say tiled I mean like the floor, the walls and the ceiling are all tiles. Um and tiling. Dirty or clean? Oh. We're on, uh, we're on, uh, three ship city. Rivet City. Oh, Rivet City. Yeah. We're actually on a U-boat going over to Germany right now. Um, and she, then she just jumps to back to the ocean, back to the shore. And she's like, goodbye, nerds. <laughs> yeah, I'm not familiar with Rivet City. Um, Fallout 4. Yeah. Fallout 3. And Hated that game. Well, no. Anyway. You hated Fallout 3? No, I hated Fallout 4. I thought oh. we were talking about 4. He said 4 first, and I said, I hated that game. Oh, okay. It's Fallout 3. Not as good as New Vegas. You want your... Um... Yes, you, I do. Did you want your fries? Because I think I have another set of fries. Yeah, can you please? Or... Hey guys, I I want fries. So, question. Yeah. If a, if like a person has like teeth problems and then become a vampire, like what happens with their fangs? Oh shit! Like, what if they, they come like, out of like weird angles and stuff? Like what if what if they have an underbite? Oh my god! They just like right. Mm -hmm. They and have they, to like, suck bite blood themselves. upside down. Yeah. Oh, like, how does that work? <laughs> Good point. All right. Are you talking about that wreckage? Because I muted you while you were talking to your mama. Okay. Yeah, no. Uh, the fangs aren't necessary for the drinking. It's the tongue that's necessary. Uh, just because the, the tongues are there just for fun. Well, no, the, the tongue 
heals the wound magically. That's the real kiss. You can cut them with a knife and drink their blood if you don't have uh, fangs for some reason. Oh. Okay. It's like the fang and a snake, and then they just cut you open and drink you anyway. Yeah, a snake uh, with a knife. <laughs> oh, hang so, on. I got the perfect gift for that. The, uh... Oh, this is the perfect gift. Stink with an F. <laughs> uh, <yeah>. Anyway. <laughs> uh, we've been continuing to tell that joke, and you still haven't put a knife or a gun in the hands of any of your tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, uh... The walls are all, the wall ceilings, etc., tiled. Um, they also have very uh, smooth corners, uh, and it seems to be an intentional feature of this place that the floor is all slightly um, ramped to drains. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a, um, a, a fuck. What's it called? Where you kill things? Fuck. Slaughterhouse? No, it starts with a an A. Kill room? No, it starts with an A. God damn it. A My silent. start with an A. A kill room. Not a slaughterhouse. Anyway. Um, the, uh... There are clearly a bunch of other rooms Abattoir. in this... Abattoir. Thank you. There are, are clearly a bunch of other rooms in this whole uh, complex. Um, and uh, this place is a little bit made up like a... Uh, uh, like a front entrance hallway. Got it. Like, like a foyer? What, yeah, like a foyer. Nice. Um, uh, because there's like a, there's a, um, there's like a little wooden desk with like a, like a vase and a plant in it. Um, the plant is dead and the desk is incredibly riddled with mold. Um, by the way, the actual definition of the word abattoir is slaughterhouse, just to, just to clarify. Um, the, uh, <laughs> uh, the, there are some trappings of someone living here. There's a rug. It's also riddled with mold. I mean, this might have something to do with the incredible high humidity that you've been e exposed to as you were coming in. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you hear a voice that says, come in, come in. How's it going? Been a while since I've seen you, Amethyst. Do, 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 do. Uh, Amethyst, uh, like, moves in, and you all move in, uh, deeper into the, the rooms. Um, um, essentially what you find, uh, that is probably why you're here, gonna mm -hmm. speed this along a little bit now and try and make up time, mm -hmm. um, is a whole bunch of, uh, computer stuff. And, mm. uh, lots of monitors, um, an excessive number of monitors really but also like server racks and server stuff. And it's all just sort of here um, as opposed to the like trappings of furnishings um, from before that like, were like, this is a place where people live. Like, and it was all moldy and not upkept. The uh, computer gear is incredibly well-maintained. Um, amethyst uh, like pulls a chair out at like what it is a terminal mm -hmm. um and says uh yeah uh so i'll share this info with you if you help us like sift through it uh, and he's like yeah what do you got um what well he, what does he look like you don't see anybody okay uh you just hear him talking uh like, and he's like well he's invisible we don't see him or he's behind a curtain we don't see him um, like he's nearby. Um, there's lots of venting and, and uh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I know, I know, yeah, yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, the uh, she's like, well, we think that these guys, the Kui Jin are up to something. We think, and we've the we 
basically, uh, uh, I mean, we just downloaded the contents of a computer that was at a shitty uh, shipping place where they would probably have to go through if they were doing anything untoward. Um, mm-hmm. He's like, ah, okay, well, I'll pop it in. So she puts it in, and like you know, they start unpacking it, basically, um, or the computer starts unpacking it. Um, Throwing a big server in, we haven't seen the dude, and she's talking we, uh, to someone. This voice says. So, uh, I mean, it's just a lot of content. There really isn't a way to, to, to figure out what we want just by, you know, there's no magic program. So it's just going to take eyes. Why don't you guys pull up chairs, start sifting through files, you know? Can I, can I write a program to help sift it? No. He just said, this is, you can't, he just said the words. You, there's no, you can't, the a program can't just find what you're looking for you're gonna have to use my programming skills yeah i mean it's kind of like when you look through old newspapers and you don't know what you're right it's like you you don't know what you're Uh, looking like if if you wanted to create like a control f program that would work if you knew what you were looking for right right. but you have no idea what you're looking for uh wreckage is there any way that i can look into like my history of like finding criminals or whatever and you know you know police terms or like you know things that i would suspect that uh, such an organization would be into and maybe go from there because what are we actually trying to accomplish here we're trying to find what their what their uh criminal habits are and then like what remove them from them like are we trying to weaken them like i think i think it was basically seeing if the because there's as of as of now on the face the Kuijin and the Anarchs are like, we're cool with each other. But there's like a, like, behind the scenes, they think they might be doing some shit. And I think it's, the idea is to find out if they are doing shit. Right. It's to look for actions that you can attribute to the Kuijin. Some sort of build up, you know, buying weapons, uh, like too many weapons. It, or With the intent to weaken, like take that away from them or like take away? No, just to find it. You're just trying to find it okay what would what would just find i mean we both like everyone knows that they're into shit right isn't that the whole point of them being criminals it's kind of like how the anarchs are into shit right seeing something that that would be like oh this because well because obviously it's gonna we'll probably obviously find like oh they brought in guns or they brought in stuff but like if there's an actual like basically want to see if there's like oh them bringing in this means that they're probably going to be making a move against the anarchs soon is that like, is that what we're after? We're looking for cause deny. Like we're looking for like uh, we're looking for something to link them to previous attempts at Anarch. So like no, no, we're just looking to see if they're making a move right now. Yeah, yeah, we're just looking. They're to they're an s- enterprise. They're always making moves. Isn't that the whole point of an enterprise? The Kui Jin specifically are uh, like they're just supposed to be the vampires in Chinatown. They're allowed to have a foothold there because of cultural significance, right? Like they said, these are our people. This is where our business interests are, you know. And and the anarchs were like, fine, you can have Chinatown, you can have the access to the ports that you need to have access to, but like, you know, at any point, various groups are like. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to take over, you know, everybody else or whatever. Like, in order to do that, they would have to be moving a whole bunch of material or a whole bunch of vampires clandestinely. They would they would have to be doing an arms buildup. Like, that's the sort of thing that you're looking for. You're yeah. looking for like something. If we see, like, if we see manifests of, like, a lot of stuff coming in but not going out anywhere and they're just, like, holding it up, that would probably be weird. Or, like, shipping containers that don't have any manifests would be weird because there's probably people in there. Uh, like or like a shipping container that was like we delivered a hundred coffins. Yeah, so that, or something like that would be super weird. Um, uh, like I would imagine if there's any sort of record of where the stuff goes afterwards. Like if it's like okay, cool, these are places in Chinatown. But if we see one that's like oh, this one's going to West LA. Like okay, wait, that's a little weird. Why are they sending a bunch of guns to West LA? Like that that kind of thing is what we're looking for because I guess I, I, they're criminals. Obviously, yes, they're bringing in weapons and drugs and etc. But like, so here's the thing. Also, like specifically, it doesn't like 
you're about to do a roll, right? You don't actually need to know specifically right yeah yeah, yeah. Looking for i like like if you still don't get it that's fine well, we'll what, just... I, what i'm trying to say is if i was to be a little bit more specific in what i'm looking for because i've looked into criminal behavior before can i get a difficulty downgrade no so the the all the difficulty is in navigating and combing computer files which you have no skill in um at all so you're just another pair of eyes here. Um, I mean, but okay. So I, I have experience looking for criminal activities, yet I have nothing to add to this particular role. Because this is about computers and technology, <sighs> not about investigating crimes. Okay. If there was a role for like afterwards, like piecing it all together and what it means, that could probably be be that. But this is literally just like we're sitting at a computer screen, like sifting through data. So like. Yeah, That's... this is about how quickly and efficiently you can use a computer. That's what this role yeah. is. Right. Like, yeah, like afterwards, it's like, okay, quick, we have this, we have this collected data. What does it mean? Oh, I'm a, I'm a cop that's looked at criminals before. I can, I can probably parse through it and figure out something, what, what it means. That would probably be a thing. Uh, so anybody or everybody can make an intelligence computer check. Uh, oh, there I'll are totally enough computer terminals. There are enough computer terminals for everybody to sit down. Um, and start combing through. Intelligence. I have no computers, but I have four intelligence. Uh, regular difficulty? Yeah. It's just a standard difficulty. Two successes. I kind of help. Two successes. Uh, well, I mean, there's not really any point in me making this role. I feel like I'd probably get in the way more than anything, especially since I'm fucking handicapped when it comes to computers. So, you can't hurt this role. There's like nothing. Like you can't blow up the computer, even if you botch. Oh. This is just eyes. What's the difficulty? Six. Six. Two. No. Two successes. There you go. There you go. Dude, fuck exactly as fuck, good as everybody this, else. Fuck this game. <laughs> <laughs> Nine dice, botch. Two dice, two successes. Right. Yeah. Um, right. So everybody helps exactly the same amount. Um, I also like is, the idea that it's it's like you guys like, and I'm just like, like I'm just like I, I'm like. Oh, fucking computers. And I just like, I don't know, grab the mouse and click on a thing and open up and be like, no, this is what we need. We like split the data. You just happen to get the one that has I a bunch it. of stuff. You guys are going through like manifest of like bringing in like tools and nails and shit. Uh, and I go, I open the one that's just like, uh, like it's security footage of like, Fucking nine hundred dudes packed into a fucking shipping container, <laughs> and I'm just hey, like, "Is this something? Hey, this looks like it might be important." Yeah. <laughs> like, fucking Jesus. Uh, so basically, like, um, this is gonna take a while. Still, like, this is a role that occurs over a great period of time. While you're all sitting at these adjacent computer terminals, sort of combing. <laughs> files is i mean any- i'm incredibly there. more interested in like the fucking person that is yet to be in the room but not in the room like i've never met an invisible man before you know what i mean like i i can't let that leave my mind wreckage so i mean but so what does that turn into it's like are you talking to him are you trying to get him to come out like what's let, let's assume that I do this role and I find some stuff and I just get fucking No, I'm talking and- about all the time that this is going to take a long time to look in the files. So I'm wondering if this is just a silent, like, two hours that you guys are sitting at the terminals. Oh, no, oh. no. I would probably, but, like... Uh, that's what when, I'm asking about right yeah, now. Yeah, once we sit down and start typing and stuff and just, like, digging through things, I'll probably, like... So, Amthus, who's your friend? Oh, it's uh... Yeah... I mean... Sort of an awkward non introduction. Um, uh, Martin, these are the Chuckle Fucks. And Chuckle Fucks, these are, this is Martin. Uh, 
this Martin's around. Like he, he's a little shy. Don't worry about it. Okay. What is he? A vampire? The fucking air? The dust mites? Like what is he? Where is he? <laughs> Am I That's breathing him in right now? Like what's going on here? Uh, you know, it's rude to talk about people in the second person when they're right here. Yeah, well, you're not. So, as far as I know, you could be a fucking speak. You could be a guy that's seven levels down, and you could be a pile of mush that has fangs in it. I wouldn't know. I mean, sure, let's go with that. All right, pile of mush. What do you eat? Blood. A vampire. And what does it like come down from like a series of event like vents? Like people pour like a big funnel down to you and you just drink it? Like what's the deal? You've got a fucked up imagination, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm talking to a guy who's clearly not in this room or he is. I'm gonna turn on my aspects to see if I can find this fucking guy. Um Sure. Um let me just quickly see if they changed the rules for this in the... Uh... I would think no. No, there are specifically rules for this. Oh, really? Okay. Um, trying to find a, a hidden Nosferatu? Well, because I'm pretty sure the power would directly oppose how Auspex works. Auspex is the power to see through illusions, and this is an illusion. Oh, it counts as okay. It's an illusion. Okay, it is okay. Mm -hmm. But there, there are specific Auspex rules for two when is aura Kfx, not not Auspex one. So none of, none of us have Auspex two. I want to get Auspex two because that'd be fucking incredibly useful. But mm -hmm. yeah, did you? Yeah. So the the question here is um, if they change the rules, like. Like, at one point, the rule was you can't even try if they have more dots than you in the opposing um, power. So I mean, I'm seeing if that's that's what the 20th edition is. I can try. Whether or not I succeed is a different story. No, it means, like, you can't even <laughs> succeed. If they, like, if you have Auspex 1 and he has Obfuscate 2, it does not matter what you roll. You will never see him. That was one of the, that was one of the <laughs> editions of rules. So I'm seeing mm. what the current rules are. Um Seeing the unseen. When a vampire tries to use it, to take this to she sees it. Conversely, if the target's office face, outrage, or aspects. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you you can't you you can attempt with aspects. You will not be able to succeed. Okay. Uh if if you had more aspects than he had obfuscate, or if you were tied, you would be allowed to make um the role all right question for my upgrade path whatever how far am i away from obtenebration for it uh the fourth dot in the power is a very big landmark so you're still a ways away last time at the end of the last arc you said pretty close but not there yet and i'm like okay and now it's like a mile away i was like mm. i mean i'm keeping track of how much xp you guys have and it's four times like the the dots and abilities get exponentially more expensive. They're the things mm -hmm. that get the most expensive. So fourth dot obfuscate is the most expensive thing you could ask for right now. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not going to get any more. Dot. I'm not going to get any more XP anytime soon. You know, like I'm not going to get faster XP because we're we're getting more. You know what I mean? Like sure you, are. Ooh. <laughs> you get the XP for the things you do. I get that. If you do things. So you got XP for getting out of that building with information. Right. Okay. Great. Perfect. Oh, that's awesome. What are you reading, Atox? I'm reading more into Auspex, and now I and now I really want to get more Auspex. Yeah, Auspex too is really good because you get you get fucking like auras and shit, and you can see what type of undead people are. It's good. Like for example, if we ran into those sinews, we could be like, they're not humans, and we could just be like, th that information is just available to you if you have Auspex too. Like it's super good, and that's the reason why I bought. An additional fucking power tree with my dude because Auspex is very much like a I want to see what's going on yeah. sort of thing. But That's again, like it's one of those things where like I'm pulled in so many different directions because of this fucking game. Apparently, like everyone went information gathering in this game, so I'm trying to not do that because we don't have 
someone who can soak a lot of hits in this fucking group. Like none of us <laughs> can soak hits, so I'm trying to fucking make that happen. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, you try and pierce the veil with Auspex. Uh, you realize how uh, how clean this room is compared to other rooms in the place. <laughs> like the computer room is well kept. Um, the other places were dingy and not well kept. Uh, you you can see you know air being moved by vents. Um, you you know you can hear through the wall the sound of of moving water. Mm-hmm. Um, but you do not see this man. Okay. You know, so assuming it's a man, but his name's Martin. So great. More people who don't want to fucking do anything or show their face. Welcome to vampires. <laughs> At, it's kind of fair. Doesn't Amethyst. Is Amethyst it? like throws a slipper at you and is like, Hey, people are allowed to be fucking shy. He's leaving you use his supercomputer for free. Don't be a thankless asshole. I'm not thankless. I just want to see the man who I'm talking to. That's it. Why the fuck so, are you wearing slippers? I think it's just one of the Chinese people slippers that I threw. I just had still. Sorry. All right. So, Martin, you're into uh, computers, obviously. Yeah. That's pretty unique for a vampire. At least I haven't seen any other ones that are into computers. Hello. Well, yeah, you don't have like a big giant server room. You 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 haven't been in my apartment. You don't know my life. I don't. <laughs> You're right. You never talk to us, Brayden. <laughs> <laughs> I I hate you guys. <clears throat> the uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I am. It's line. Of, it's my line of work. Cool. You know, it's how I make a living or an un unliving, I, I guess. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, yeah. Is, is uh, that a 486 Pentium? No, it's a 1020i, you fucking idiot. Oh my god, that's amazing. That's like top like like how do you even afford that? I don't. I pay people to steal it for me. <laughs> <laughs> In bulk. That's a really good idea. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Also, sometimes you can like mind control them and stuff. It's yeah, don't don't worry about it. Mind control the computers? No, the people to steal computers for you. Ah, uh, well, damn. I'm not good with people. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I agree. I like this guy. Okay, man. Really hard to have morals when you're a vampire. Uh, I mean, I see what you're saying, but also, like, I'm literally, like, a spy. I like, I, I like, just, I, I like, looking like, if I was in room, a... and I'm just like, you're more like a nerd, actually, I would say. Spies can be nerds. <sighs> yeah, I would. Have you read any books lately? Because as far as I'm concerned, you, you cannot be a spy and be a nerd. Being a nerd, you oh. look like you look like this one. I mean, no offense, he's a great guy. But wait a minute, did you read a book? Because if you did, then you're a nerd. <laughs> reading sick, a re- reading combat. a book a book doesn't make you a nerd. Having a supercomputer designed around like being able to read a, a, a what do you call it a floppy dick like that's nerdy. You know what I'm saying? Okay, but like. Reading a paperback novel written by some balding middle-aged man who's never gotten to a fight in his life doesn't make you an expert on actual espionage. Yeah. I mean, you know, I used to go out in the streets and actually do espionage action, undercover work, that sort of shit. And you're over yeah, here. Being a detective makes you an investigator. A spy is a totally different like category. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right. It's a next level thing. Okay. The closest thing you've ever done to mm-hmm. anything I've ever done is wiretapping someplace. Are you kidding me? You don't even know half the shit I've done on the Force. Actually, I know everything you've done on the Force. I have your file, Damien Holland. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, you have my fucking file. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I believe that shit. Yeah, what was my second wife's name then, huh? What was your second wife's name? 
Uh, Rachel. Rachel. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> the, then you hear. Also, Rachel's doing pretty well these days. Yeah, no, she married some fucking jewelry store owner or some shit. That's besides the fucking point, though, mate. I don't want to hear anything more about that stupid cheating wife of mine. Ex-wife, sorry. Ex-wife. They're franchising. <laughs> look, look, fucking conflict diamonds make a lot of money these days, all right? I don't want anything to do with that. You went to Jared. <laughs> right, anyway, we're all friends here, I guess. Trying to be. Yeah. Let's just, uh, you know, keep coming through these files. Um... And, you know, with that conversation in the past, uh, basically all in unison, you all see, since you, got, you all got two successes, you all <laughs> the exact same file at the exact same time. Enhance. Like, you, you know, maybe Braden's going through twice as many files, but he started from the wrong end of the computer. And, and, and Damien's only done, like, two files, but the second one he opens is the right one. It's like, it... You, yeah, all get you know what it is? You know what it is, Wreckage? When I open the right file, I'm just like, you see that it shit? Hits. That's some Ian Fleming shit right there, motherfucker. You can't get that shit by sitting in a computer room and doing that shit. Real spies, I mean, so they have the charisma, they have the luck, they have everything, all right? Jesus. <laughs> so you all open the exact same file, which is uh, more or less what you're looking for. It is a, uh, it's not a shipping manifest. It's not like a detailed thing. It's an email from this executive, uh, Tobashi, is the one that you hacked. Mm -hmm. uh, it's from, uh, it's from somebody, but you like the actual from address is uh, corrupted data. It won't let it won't let you see it, um, and uh, it says. Um, Make sure that the shipment on the 11th has the standard red care package. Don't make any waves. The bonuses will be in your account by the 15th when it makes landfall. <laughs> a vampire setting up a fucking bank account when banks shut at 5 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see how they managed to pull that off. I'm sure he's got like a roadie or something that like takes care of his shit for him, right? <laughs> All the world's banks are controlled by vampires in World of Darkness. I just, I just like, can you... Yeah, I need you to set up a new bank account for this 35,000-year-old vampire. And he's just like, no, no, they, You know what it is? You know why banks shut at five? So that the vampires can have their turn. In the <laughs> <laughs> That's why banks close so early. Because it's vampires' time. It's like ghoul, like, like the second half of the night, and they're all like all ghoul tellers, you know, all yeah, all like the like the fucking like like getting a new car license and shit like that. Is just like okay, Dracula, stand still for the photo. He's like, Bleh! he's like, <laughs> he's like, no, I need you to not pull a face. And it's just like, and then they have a little sombra coming in, but they can't. They have to find, like, a model that matches what he looks like so that they can take his fucking passport photo. Like, they holy take, shit. Like, a... like... <laughs> it's like the only way to take his photo is to fill the room with, like, steam. And then, like, his outline will be there, kind of. And then they have to, like, get an artist to, like, draw it, like, in Photoshop on. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, an artist. That would be the quicker and easier way to do it, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um... Like crime scene type type artist. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, how do you describe yourself? Well, I'm fucking. This is my face. Like, <laughs> yeah. how do I describe myself? I have not seen myself in twenty five thousand years. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell you. <laughs> uh. But blueberries is the. Ghost series. Ghost. That's a ghost's favorite food. God, what a fucking idiot. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, just fleshcraft a ghoul that looks exactly like them. Yeah, there you go. That's how you get around it. Take a fucking photo of him. Done. Uh, the uh, the so you all find the same file. 
and it's like it's obviously spooky enough um and uh Martin, apparently, because all of your terminals then come up with another thing, which is the manifest of the shipment that is on the 11th. Uh, and he's like, yeah, this is definitely what we're looking for here. This is a, uh, you know, this is a 10,000 ton freighter. And its manifest is like less than a third. But they'd have no reason to shit to move that. They'd have no reason with all of the imports from China these days to move a ship that empty, that big. And this whole spooky red care package thing. Yeah, this is what you're looking for. This is them moving something secret and spooky uh, across the ocean. Secret and spooky as in... What gave it the way? Was it the fucking email where they said your payment will be in the mail or was it something else? I mean, it was all the pieces combined put together. Mm, all right. Do you have like a whiteboard to show me your math? I just explained my math to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, mate. So, what, do you have any ideas what Maybe they might be you're moving? Embarrassing me. Like people or uh, other vampire? I'm sorry, we're new at this, so I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure what what they would be bringing over. I mean, the <sighs> they're doing something, and they're not supposed to be. That's sort of the. That's the that's the cut and dry straight to the meat, right? There's a whole list of things that they could be doing, but they're all things they're not supposed to be doing, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, now, as I understand it, you, uh, Team Chucklefuck, is trying to not get staked at Elysium. Well, sure. this info is part of that. That sh that sure will look good. But figuring out what they shipped on the 11th, bringing that information, answering that question you just asked me, now that would be a lot more useful, a lot more tantalizing. All right. So, you know, it's nice having someone at the desk who can support the field agents when they go out to do the spy work, right? I, like, look over at Brad and like, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right. Thank you for your work. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. We're going to go dig up what this fucking red box is. Well, it's a little close to sunrise, so you're going to, but probably tomorrow night. I assume. That's a good idea. I mean, you're welcome to stay, but my accommodations aren't comfortable. Not that uh, it yeah, matters. I don't really feel anything when I sleep in lab or so it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We're going back to the taste. Uh, we don't want to put you out. I don't know if it. Yeah, it was just a nicety. Get go go away. Oh, all right. Thanks again for your help. He's yeah, got, no problem. He's got to take off his invisibility. It was nice to meet you. Leave. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to meet you too. Have them put the blindfolds back on, Amethyst. She's like, yeah, yeah. No problem, Martin. I am. Thanks. I am. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh. Bye, Have Martin. A good... Yeah, bye. Uh, see you around. Uh, so if you guys willingly put your blindfolds back on. Yep. As soon as the blindfolds are on, you'll hear the, uh, like, the door open again. Uh, and you'll be let out. And then you'll be shuffled into a taxi that Amethyst calls. And then she'll be like, okay, you guys can take your blindfolds off. I honestly thought you were going to say, she takes off her blindfold, spanks us on her ass and says, you're free. And then we just all run into the fucking forest being like, Ooh. why did you honestly <laughs> think I was going to say that? I don't really know. I don't know. Like that? I just, for some reason, it just went through my mind. <laughs> <I'm just> like, <laughs> like, I don't need this horse anymore, but I don't want it to die in gunfire. Runs off, right? I don't, know the doggo. <laughs> I don't know why I thought of that. <laughs> the doggo's descendants still roam free on the Montana plains. Yeah, we, 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 we chuck off our saddles and we run into the forest. I don't, I'm sorry. That's, I have an active imagination this episode, so like you're going to have to excuse me. Well, that was a fun evening. We did pretty well. 
Nothing went terribly wrong. I like Martin. Braden likes Martin. He's all right. We got to kill some people. <sighs> Are you going to say every time someone dies? Uh, random innocents that didn't have to die, yeah. I mean, it's just a sigh. Can I... I want to spout off some, like, actual, like... Yeah, this is how many people die in LA every fucking day, and you don't fucking sigh every time one of those perish sort of things. I'm just she like, didn't cause those deaths. It, it doesn't matter. I'm still fucking doing it. <laughs> I'm just that like, doesn't mean it. That doesn't mean anything. You know, 300 people a day die in this city. Probably, yeah. Not, I'm not probably. Say, are you saying I'm it's good? I'm, I'm telling you that's the exact number that the the average number of deaths that the LA police department deals with every single day. And. Where's their size? She didn't cause those ones! That's a data point. Exactly. I'm not saying... These I'm guys saying are going to be nothing more than a data point. Don't worry about it. You get used to it. So It's I'm all terrible. Look, okay. it's like... she She's a doctor and she's supposed to be trying to prevent deaths. And now she's... Yeah, I get it. Like, she's tangentially responsible for them it's different than just random death which she's encountered before in the er i'm sure i'm sure she didn't sigh every time some other doctor accidentally killed his patient but when she accidentally killed her patient you know she sighs or more no you just sigh how many of your companions as a doctor were giving out the uh, drugs to people in the street i'm wondering i don't know yeah. Okay. Well, it's the it's the '90s, so the prescription epidemic hasn't really kicked into full swing yet. Is Martin still here with us? No, this is Rodney right now. Oh, he's just doing he's just, he's just doing Martin's voice. <laughs> he's, do, yeah, he's doing Rodney. Who you were talking almost. as? He was doing Rodney <laughs> as almost Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Like we, we can say what other people are doing all night. That doesn't mean anything, though. I'm allowed to feel bad when innocent people die. You might not, but I, whatever. Listen, sweetie, you get this. We're vampires now. We're going to be killing a lot of humans. Everything we do results in a lot of human casualties. Probably close to, to all of those 300 if I'm looking at it right now, right, Amethyst? Well, your statistic's probably just wrong. Like, most of vampire deaths probably don't even make it into the report. Oh, yeah, that's not even including, like, the ones that just missing, are missing, you know? Yeah, like, poof. Mm, like, Mostly packed vampires. their bags, went overseas, never told their family sort of missing. Yeah, those people won't get reported. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> I mean, they don't even know that vampires were involved. Yeah, I didn't even know vampires were involved, and that number was still too small for me. I thought it was higher, to be honest with you, in a lot of cases, and it probably is. Look, oh. I'm, not, I'm not saying that that makes... I'm not saying you shouldn't feel nothing, but, I mean... It's part of the job. You know, yeah, the first day that we met that each other, you uh, you helped us uh, put some bikers down, so, you know. Well, those were other vampires. I get that she draws the line, but they, they were fighting us. Once dead I, sort of line? Is that where that line is? Like, is that, like, once it's dead, it's okay to kill it again? You know? Look, those three people prevented it from turning into an open war between a bunch of Yakuza and a bunch of vampires. And a lot more people would have died. That, and also the result, would have led to even more, more death. Me, look, uh, Amethyst is going to take your hand, Maria. Maybe I was a little quick to do it, but I stand by the decision. I lean close to uh, De uh, Brayden, and I'm just like, I just, you know, take a pose like this. So, just looking at him, holding each other's hands, like, mm-hmm. You're never they're going just, to win, Brayden. Um, you're never like, going to win, Brayden. They're just, they're just friends. No, nope, you're never going they're to win. Friends. You're never going to win. Yeah, and then Rodney leans in and is like, yeah, they're just friends, and you're just enemies. <laughs> you're never going to win, buddy. 
That ship oh, has sailed. <laughs> right. I, I, I'm ignoring all of that. <laughs> no, that's all in. That's all in totally audible dialogue that is just whispered from your perspective, like yep. in the front seats. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it. Thanks for saying that. At least. I guess yeah, it's just. It's going to be hard for me to have to get used to that. You know, make whatever decisions you want to make, but every vampire you deal with is going to be pretty callous about human life. So you're going to have to get used to the people around you, you know, being callous about it. That doesn't mean you have to be callous, but it's going to be harder for you to get some things done sooner or later, you know. A human police officer is going to be the only thing between you and escape or something. Mm -hmm. He's just doing his job, but he's also just a mortal. Yeah. Uh, you can afford to be a little more gentle with the with the boys in blue, though. <sighs> there, no, no. If a police officer's got a vampire at gunpoint, he's already pretty much dead. He's seen too much. You know, if we use some special power to get away, we have to kill him to just to, to cover up the masquerade. I see. Yeah. Um, that's where you and I disagree there. I don't think it's... I would ever put down a boy in blue. No. Oh, the cops are going to be gentle with us. And they're not supposed to be. If you're, you know, throwing dead bodies out of buildings and shit like that, yeah, they're doing their job. Would you would you run a run a doctor through if he was in your way with a scalpel? Probably not. I mean, scalpel's not really threatening. <laughs> There's a Neither is a gun, Amethyst. Sure, but the police represent an entity which is threatening. Which is also controlled by the, you know, McNeil. influence. If this was a Camarilla city, they would, you know, the, the police chief and the next two shift captains would all be ghouls and they would control everything. Listen, the only thing you need to worry about is that uh, there's only one policeman on that entire force who would probably give a fuck about you. The rest of them are as dirty as they come. Well, that seems to be supporting the idea that we can just roll over them. I'm saying you shouldn't because you should just leave them be and they wouldn't do the paperwork to even look into it. <sighs> hmm. Right. So the point of this conversation is everyone sucks and life is terrible. Great. And, and no, Rodney no, no. Says, the point of this conversation is that everyone's a fucking statistic. And then Rodney this, says, this is a world of darkness. That was my line! <laughs> he oh, hits God, me in the to... shoulder. It's like, that was what I was going to say! Oh, Rodney. Look, I'm the Malkavian! Look, this isn't a fucking <laughs> role-playing game, all right? This is real life. Okay. <laughs> I guess this really is L.A. at night. <laughs> <laughs> well, I <it> shouldn't. <laughs> all right, see you next week. Bye. <laughs> 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 Holy shit. <laughs> uh. Good work, boys. <laughs> Wrap it up. Yep. <laughs> right, I mean, it is the top of the hour. I need to go check on my cat. Let's have one more quick break. Maybe not the full time length. I'll be right back. All right. So you guys go to bed, I assume, at the taste. I mean, is there anything anybody wants to try and do? Um, maybe. I don't Bef know. Beforehand? Like, are you guys just going to go home and go to bed? Because that's pretty much what's left on the um, plan for today. Yeah, time-wise, probably that's all we have really have time to do, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, you have... You'll get back with an hour or two before you're going to forcibly pass out. So it's not like you can go do anything, but you could... There's certainly room to be like... I want to have an in-depth character discussion with fucking uh, Morty. What up, Morty? <laughs> uh, we're gonna um, go on an adventure, Morty. Um, could I get uh, worth it? Worth a taste, right? Yep. Um, could I get a drink? A bloody drink? Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I, I would, I, yeah, I don't, I would just like a, a, a couple points, like, I know they're like one or two. Yeah, I'll join you. I'll join you for that. You know what? You May can. I would so, like... <laughs> here's the thing about blood drinks. Mm -hmm. Um, they aren't very sustaining. They're turned into blood drinks for the purpose of like pleasure. Um, if you have a few, you can get one blood point. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll do. I'll join her. You know. You know. Yeah. I've never actually had a sat down and had like a, you know, a chin wag with Maria. <laughs> like I've never had that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So what's well? Okay. So you're gonna join her. Uh, mm -hmm. You guys are both having a sip, sip. Uh, mm -hmm. Everybody else is fucked off, just doing something else. Yeah. I, what I, does the conversation look like? So so maybe we're just sitting there for a little bit, and I was like. You know, I, um, when it comes to this life, I'm actually struggling a little bit when it comes to what I'm supposed to be doing because I, much like you, I assume, uh, put everything into what they were doing before they turned into this. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. I had a lot. I, yeah, pretty much my I, I whole mean, life was being a doctor. And you saw the result of what happened the moment we got turned on into this thing. The police just fucking flip eighty on me. And uh, it's not a good feeling to have the people you thought had your back for most of your life turn your back, their back on you the moment you got fangs, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it's so, hard. I... So where do you see yourself going now? I mean... Lavin has fallen into this like a like a fish the water <laughs> and Brayden doesn't even look like his life has changed to be honest I'm sure he didn't even get outside any half the time anyway yeah I don't know it's That's hard true. to say I I yeah like you said my I went to the hospital went to bed rinse and repeat basically I was there helping people, just doing my thing there. And now, I mean, did you ever get the sense of like, like I saw a lot of shit on the force, you know, I saw a lot of shit. I didn't really like know. And anytime I prodded something, it was told to let it go and move on to something new, which I did every single time, because that's what I was told to do. I was a good soldier, you know, but now that I think about it, it's like it it puts in perspective how fucking meaningless all that shit was. All that time that I spent doing that, all that effort, all that time that I spent making sure that I found the right did, people and put them behind the bars, you know? Did you help people? I like to think I helped them by taking them off the streets. A lot of people that I stopped from doing their stuff, they were fucked in the head, you know? Put them into the place where they could get help reform you, them if need be but it's not makes it feel if you, so help, if you pointless if you help people then it was worth it i don't know about that you see how easily these it, it's a statistic that's all it is even i'm starting to fucking think that way yeah it's it's hard to just not see everything as a number when that's all the everyone else tries to shove in our faces with the news and everything but i tried to look at it more at you you can't save everybody i had to learn that oh, very not, quickly here's the thing i'm not interested in saving anyone right i had i had something i had meaning to my life before i found this and now that i've got eternity before me i sure as fuck don't know what i'm going to be spending it on Especially considering everything I've done up to this point is fucking meaningless. It's only meaningless if you think about it that way. No, please, it is. Someone got put into prison, they probably got fed on. There's probably a guy in prison who rules prison as a vampire. Uh, maybe. But... Someone that was going to be out in the streets and stab someone else or shoot somebody else or rob somebody else and you put them away that's that means something 
You know, the best thing I did since I became a vampire was make a dog mm. a fucking ghoul. That thing, that dog, he's going to live a lot longer. He's going to have a happier life. All because he doesn't have to worry about shit like, what is he going to do every night? You know? Well, didn't you get him from a shelter? Yeah. That's, that's something. Yeah, but that's what I did when I became a vampire because I had the power to make his life fucking meaningless. Up until that point, he was just a dog and now he's going to live almost forever. Most likely. I don't know what my life is going to be now that I have a lot more time to put into it, but... Well, here's the thing. I... You, you have something still. You have your research, right? You've been given this thing. I've seen what you can do, right? I know what you're capable of. You can change people's lives for better or for worse. You could be that miracle surgeon that, that pulls a tumor out of someone's brain and they're still intact. You could still be that person. The force is never going to work because jurisdictions, all that shit don't mean nothing. If you wanted to go back and save people's lives, you could fucking do that. That's no problem. That's not the problem at all. But what are you going to do when you put your life into someone else's hands and say, I'm going to do everything I can to clean up this city. And then you find out that it's some ephemeral being that's controlling everything from the fucking shadows. And I hate to make this about me, but fucking hell, I, I need to vent at someone at least. I, well, life's always been about people at the top being much more powerful than you, at least for me. Yeah, I was two steps away from that power. Well, at least where I thought the ceiling was. I, the only thing I can say is don't think about trying to solve everything. Just try to fix and help where you can. Yeah, I've got eternity to fucking solve things, but there's no point solving them anymore. It's just the answer is always going to be vampires. That's that's the that's the big secret. Why did that person fall off a cliff? Vampires. Why did that person fall, uh, get hit and his head came off when he was inside his car? Vampires. Why did that guy murder everyone and go crazy? Probably because he saw a fucking vampire. What? If put everything else aside, pretend there's no vampires standing in your way. There's no anything standing in your way. What would you do? Well, now that I have eternity. Yeah, you have, you're, you're, you're never going to die from natural causes. You're, the only way you can die is if whatever random vampire reasons. You have eternity, and you can do anything you want. What would it be? You know, for the first time, I don't have an answer for you. That's okay. Like I said, you have eternity. Just... Uh, no, we don't. We have three weeks, two, one, wherever the fuck it is now. Well, let's, right, that, that's our first if goal. If I don't get... find a use, like you could just say, hey, I'll fix all your faces. And I'll be like, done, welcome to the team. Braden can be like, I know computers better than anyone here. Done, welcome to the team. What has Braden got? Oh, I, got, I used to be a cop. Who gives a fuck? He's a blue. Throw him in the trash with the rest of them. I need something. Maria, I fucking need something. I need a reason. If I don't find that reason within the next couple of days, I'm fucking... They're going to sunset me so fucking fast. Yeah. Well, that's... I wouldn't sit around moping about it then. I'm fucking not. But here I am being hamstrung, right? No one's telling me that they need shit done because they have fucking eternity to solve their problems. What was something you couldn't get done when you were alive? Solve my marriage, but that's besides the point now. <laughs> there a gang, or there's a like a, 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 a person, someone that someone that got away. Well, here's the thing, because right? the bullshit laws, or and this is the best part. 
those motherfuckers that I was chasing most of my career, I woke up in a room full of them and surrounded by corpses. They're a part of this fucking clique. They are the Anarchs. Yeah. All those motherfuckers that were scalping people a couple months back. Fucking Anarchs. Well, I don't... I don't really have an answer for... Yeah. For that, but... You and me both, I think. I, finding something is difficult, but when you do, it'll... It'll... It'll it'll be it'll it'll really it'll mean something to you. You know, I actually I went to uh, I went to McNeil after that little rave we had, and I was like, "Hey man, I hear you hate running the police. I'll take it off your hands, make it so that you can run, and you know it'll still be your baby. I'll just do all the busy work because I need fucking something to take my mind off eternity, right?" And he turns around and says, "You need to find your own thing." And I was like, well, that's great. I have a week and a half to find my own thing. I'm going to spend the rest of eternity helping the other vampires do. Yeah. Anyway, enough bitching. We've got like, what, 20 minutes before we conk? Yep, pretty much. You'll find something. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Uh, Alexa comes in. It's like anything else for you two? No, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I think we're gonna probably head off to sleep. Or, well, it's yeah. about that time. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, thanks again for everything. I know I've said it a lot, but yeah, it means a lot. Well, no problem. You're going to be here a little bit longer than we usually put up people, but that's understandable considering all the rules and restrictions they're putting on you for finding your own place. Well, either way, it's a week and a half, and then you'll be gone. We'll be going out of your line. Don't worry about that. Oh, don't worry, sweetie. We'll still see you around. I hope. <laughs> right. So, uh, okay. that happened da for Damien's a... just like pretending to sleep when we walk in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Braden. Yes. While they were having their intimate conversation, uh, Rodney pulled out a deck of cards. Okay. What's, what's your game, Rodney? Uh, well, I played poker, blackjack. Gin Rummy, uh, Bridge. Well, we don't have enough for Bridge. War. Ooh, War. Perfect. Yeah, okay. That's more your speed. Um, so Rodney uh, does like full... Um, Magic the like... Gathering shuffling? Like... No, not even Magic the Gathering shuffling. Like... <laughs> <laughs> like full casino, like I'm showing off shuffling. Like the whole, like, go over to one hand. Um, and then, you know, just cuts the deck in two and puts it in front of, uh, puts it in front of Raiden. He says, so. Well, how's it going? Good. I'm going to flip this top card now. Yeah, I got a seven. I got an eight. All right, you win. What's your next card? Three. I got a four. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ace. Uh, ace is low, right? No, they're high. Shit, ten. Okay, well, I win. <laughs> Robbie, so, yeah? I have a question for you. Uh, yeah? What is your deal? War. <laughs> yeah, I'm dealing war. No, I mean, like, what? Like, I just don't understand you. Like, in a cosmic sense? I mean, you could say that, but I want to get all touchy feely with you. I just don't understand. Like, what? 
What are you trying to do with us? Are you protecting us? No. I got no? sired with you guys. You're, I have to get the vote at the Elysium, too. Okay. I, I, you just you seem off to me sometimes. And for me to think that somebody seems off, well, I mean... I thought we were all past off. all this when we went on our buddy cop heist. I, that, and the, believe me, that was great. But I still just can't figure out for the <laughs> life of me why you just seem to disappear at the most inconvenient times. Well, I disappear when you guys are about to f create a situation that's worse than the one before so that I can come bail you out without getting wrapped up in it. I disappear so often because you guys fuck up so often. That's what Amethyst thinks anyway. Uh, I guess that makes sense. Nine. Eight. But I win. Ah, you're really carrying this game, this sophisticated game of champions. I'm really good at war. Jack. Six. Okay. It, but you're not good at, like, not getting punched by Amethyst or making them mad at you. Well... You gotta understand, I don't really know how to talk to women, especially beautiful women like Amethyst. Stop thinking of her as a... Here, here's my advice to you, buddy. One red-blooded male to the other. Uh, you gotta stop viewing Amethyst as a woman and start viewing her as a bulldozer. Uh, okay. Like, like, how do you mean? Like I'm taking you, out my notepad. It's like you wouldn't flirt with a bulldozer. You wouldn't have a relationship with a bulldozer. You wouldn't continually stand in a bulldozer's way so that it could run over you over and over again. Well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, that makes sense. Like, obviously, I would fall over the bulldozer. A bulldozer can't keep me warm at night. Neither can Amethyst. Well, I mean, nothing can keep me warm at night. I guess, but... Well, a space heater could. Something that generates well, heat. So you're saying I should have a, a, a relationship with a space heater? Or like a melon that you took out of the microwave. I don't even want to think about that, thank you. It works. Uh, I have it on good authority. Whatever, <laughs> whatever floats your boat. <laughs> But even I've never gotten that desperate. Listen, all I know <laughs> is that she uh, gives me butterflies in my stomach, and that makes me do stupid shit. And no, I really no, that was, re that was a that was a rebarb. It was a pull of rebarb in your stomach, not a butterfly. Oh, oh, well, shit! It all makes fucking sense now. Thanks a lot, Rodney. Two. What? <laughs> Oh shit, we're two. playing war. <laughs> <laughs> also a two. War. Uh, well, oh my god, it's a war. Oh, yeah, then you do the thing. Uh, 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 I put down two cards face down and then flip a third. Third, right, yeah, that's what happens. Jack. Uh, oh, queen, give me all your cards. Hey, oh, you did it. Uh, you're so skilled and this fucking. <clears throat> anyway. Um, Look, man, it's like, is that really what you want anyway? I mean, I don't know. I don't know what I want. Well, what do you like? We'll figure that shit out. Like, it, like, we're just going through the paces here. We're just trying not to get killed in two weeks. What about after? I mean, what about after? Like, we've got, we've got um, a, a pretty good place, I think. I think, uh, Fuck, what is it called? Bite or vein? The vein, but it's the above vein. the vein. Yeah. I, I think I think the vein is uh is gonna be awesome, you know, but like we can't really go there. We're kind of like trapped in limbo, and I'm just I, I'm getting uncomfortable being around all these people all the time. Well, yeah, okay. But like so then maybe what about like that Martin guy? I mean Martin's awesome. 
Martin's just living off on his own. He's got his own little haven with a whole bunch of computers, and he does espionage work to get the, the bills paid. It's amazing. So maybe that's what you should be doing if you're so shitty around other people. Well, I mean, but for I also want to talk to other people. To, like, I want to get past that. Like, it's not that I don't want to be around people. And just because okay. I'm shitty around people doesn't mean I need to, like, just stop being around people. How old were you when you got sired? 32. 32 is a little late in your developmental cycle to be, you know, honing social skills. And now your brain is necrotized and can't develop new neurological pathways. See, this is why elders are set in their ways, because they can't actually learn new things. You're going to be a social piece of shit for the rest of your life. I, I, mean, I don't think that's true, right? What? But I don't. I don't think that's true. What's true? I think. I think you could change. Who said people something about change. change? Yeah. What? Like I think people could change. We're not people. Well, god damn it! You know what I'm. You know what I'm saying? Are, are you telling me that vampires are just the same way forever? Yeah. I don't think so. Six. Two. Fuck you. I'm down by like seven cards. <laughs> I think I teach you to play poker. I don't know. I, I, I think I think if I try hard enough, I can learn. Maybe I can do what Martin does, but not be alone. I don't I just I don't want to be alone, but I don't know. I just got to learn. You know, Don Salvador, he helped me out with some stuff a few nights back. Sometimes Maria helps me. She's nice. Yeah, Maria's nice. Maria's in it for everybody. Yeah, but she's also a good like, amethyst. Yeah, but amethyst isn't nice. Well, I, I mean, but do we really know that? I think <laughs> she just might be a tough nut to crack. Okay, but see, that is a toxic masculine uh, perspective of a woman to assume that the front that she's putting on isn't what she's actually saying, isn't what she actually is. What you're doing is you're asserting your masculinity over her feminine identity and asserting that she is subservient to you and therefore is something for you to crack and turn into what you think she really should be. I mean, that makes sense. What? Yeah. What? That makes sense. What makes sense? What you just said. What did I say? Was that... What? Am I going crazy? No. Eight. Nine. God damn it. I used to be really good at this game. It's a game purely of luck. Eh, there's some skill. No, no, there literally isn't. Once the deck is shuffled and split, the game's already in a solved state. It's just a time killer. You just keep thinking that. It's mathematically Two. true. Three. Damn it. I meant to do that. I'm just... I'm just... Lulling you into a false sense of security. You literally flip the top card of your deck. It, you have no control over what it is. You, it could be played by a cat Queen. knocking it over. Queen. War. Ah. All right. Put him down. Five. Five. Double war. Oh, my God. See, this. now this is when it gets really crazy. Like, this is the best part of the game. Look, all I'm saying, Brayden, is that, look, Damien's in the other room having a, con a cri crisis of identity and trying to figure out what he's going to do. And I think you're in the same position. You need to come to terms with your vampiric identity. You know, of all of us, Maria's the only one who really knows what she's going to be doing, but she's hesitant to do it, you know, because it's a whole moral cliff that she doesn't want to walk over. Right. 
but you and Damien, you're just like, oh, we got special powers and we used to be shut-ins with no lives committed entirely to our work or committed entirely to video games. And now you don't know what it's like to be a part of a team, a part of a team that does various different nuanced things. Again, that makes sense. Like Damien's sitting here and we're looking at a computer and he's like, how can I do this in a policey way? It's like, there's, you know, you gotta, the problem is that both of you had this rigid self-identity. It's been shattered by the process of you dying and being turned into a vampire and you need to grow a new one from the ashes. Okay. Ace. Well, shit. Ten. All right. I win the double war and now I'm up. Fuck. That's right. I can get, I can get, well, see, now my deck is flipped over. Now I shuffle it and then here, this is the skill. It's all in the shuffle. Right. Two. Two. Yes. No, I mean, I also have a two. Oh, war. <laughs> I, I don't know. It makes sense. I think I hear what you're saying, Rodney, and I can't believe I'm agreeing with you, but. What did I say? Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. You are the fucking worst. At war? It's a game of luck. Who is that talking? When you're talking and making sense, who is that? Is that the real you? What? What do you mean? Do you not remember anything that you were just saying to me? I said I have a two. Oh. I'm like, oh, Rodney. And then, like, freeze frames and, like, the audience, like, laughs and the opening <laughs> credits come up. <laughs> I like the freeze frame. No, no you it's freeze frame and you it's, just be like, <laughs> but it's full back because it's dawn. No, 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 like you freeze frame the credits start rolling and like you guys are all paused and like, ah, and then like, like 20 seconds into the credits scrolling, Rodney just like, like straightens his tie or something and like goes back <laughs> to the freeze frame. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I think. Um, do, 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 do. I mean, I try to end on a cliffhanger, but we're we're coming up uh, towards the end here with outros, and I don't think we can get anything else started uh, tomorrow. You I mean, guys could do prob- a fade away to the bad guy doing the thing, except for the missile coming towards LA. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we need everyone who has any sort of you know potence to get in a line to throw Damien like a fucking 10 villagers throwing a fucking pole instantly <laughs> across space and time to throw Damien yeah. into the air so that he can punch it with his potence and blow it up. <laughs> Boom. That's how Damien <laughs> sacrificed himself to save. They tell you that they, <laughs> that they want you to punch it, but really they like just strap some thermite to you and they set it off when you hit it. No, like, we'll, just get a, we'll just get a big ramp. He gets an honorary... And celerity yeah. will run at the ramp. And fire themselves up. And no, use I'll... celerity to kick, a, to throw the frisbee at the thing. Yeah. Like, with enough people in a line who have celerity, and you pass it up the line like a fucking rail gun. And you... Yeah, rail gun! <laughs> Here's the thing with celerity. Again, you don't maintain momentum with celerity. That's oh. why Amethyst, like, shows up in a room and just stops. And she doesn't, like, roadrunner, like, you know, oh, like, darn. yeah. Huh. That's the thing. thing. Yeah, so... If a person like, with a portal gun also used celerity, what happens? Um... <laughs> nothing. It's just... This, they just move through it quicker. Is there a power where you, like, stay in your place and you can't be moved? Yeah, it's it's called uh, a bone... It's called a graveyard. Uh, it's, no, it's called boneyard, and it's a sin to power. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'm not joking. That's a real power. <laughs> All right, so we'll go get one of the sin eaters. Nice. Right. Right. And we'll I get mean, someone, and then we'll get people with potence to throw them. And look, in I the mean, era, they'll do their I, thing. The missile will hit them, and nothing happens. You've heard that the sin eaters have a magic force field. So I assume if there was a missile listlessly making its way towards <laughs> LA, so, <laughs> so that you had, so that you had time time to go get. <laughs> Like setting up all this shit you're talking about setting up, you know, just just like you know, lazily coming along. Guys, we have three weeks before the missile hits us. Why don't we just leave? It's, it's like it's like a jalopy, like pop, 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 
<laughs> it has to reverse up the hill because it's like the engines at the back. Of the <laughs> um, um, there's a little hamster inside on a wheel. Uh, the uh, uh, um, eh, hold on a second. Um, can I do a shot of what a villain is doing? Are any villains doing anything? Right now? <laughs> um, Martin's like, yes, I'm the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but we don't see him. We just we just hear his fingers going. Excellent, um, <laughs> Smithers. Sure, let's let's get a scene of what a, a villain is doing. All right. Uh, so the camera comes up on a very offensive and stereotypical, uh, like incense filled, uh, Chinese decoration room, like, you know, giant wooden, um, uh, like, uh, you know, you know what they do when they, again, stereotypically as a stereotype, not realistically, but like the wall is a wooden cutout of like a, uh, character, in Chinese, that means like hope or whatever, um, and and that's it. And also, there's like a table with a golden dragon on it, and no, it's a like jade, right? Just to be even more stereotypical and offensive, you know that. Put your mind into. There's also a money cat pointing at the door, going like this, you know. Sure. <laughs> Why um, the fuck not? Like you know, just get it over and done with. Let's go. Uh, there is a beautiful woman, um. And she's wearing a low-cut green uh, dress that looks like snake scales, um, and her got hair is seven stilettos in her uh, upper thigh that she has hidden. Uh, and her her long, gorgeous black hair is done up uh, with the two with the, uh, the 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 sticks, you know, the hair sticks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and of course, her skin is deathly pale. Uh, she's and as cold as ice. She's Where on the other side. She's on the other side of a desk. And in the center of this room, uh, like seven Japanese businessmen naked with bull gags in there. <laughs> <laughs> no. They're... Oh, my God. Some of the mafiosos Being used yak- as footstools. <laughs> Some of the mafiosos and uh, Yakuza from earlier in the evening are kowtowing to her. Uh, some are bowing. Some are, like, doing the full kowtow, like the full head to the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they... Uh, the scene suggests that they've just finished giving their report to this woman. Um, and uh, she's like, hmm... Director Tobashi, you say. Interesting. Escaped off of the fifth floor. Through decoys out the third floor, across the street, Hmm. onto a roof. They're related to me. Interesting. Hmm. Gentlemen. I'm afraid we're going to have to move our timetable up. And there are some, you know, yes, mistress, like, yeah, bow, yes, of course, yes. And then they, they sort of leave the room. Uh, and she turns to look out of her incredibly ornate and culturally offensive window. Um <laughs> Because it's like also like a big chi- like Chinese oh, character. Yeah, I, I, I like, I like the idea that she, she opens it. She's like, "There we go, not so racist anymore." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the uh, she looks out the window uh, into the night, uh, and the camera uh, like pans over her shoulder. 
like through the window out onto the LA skyline that she's looking over. Um, and uh, the scene goes black to the sound of a snake, like an actual snake hissing and slithering away. Oh uh, boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. I like that um, during character creation, I was like, I want to be these guys. And Wreckage is like, no, no. And then, and then they show up as bad guys. So <laughs> great. Yeah. <laughs> great. Great. Nice. Perfect. Uh, no, they're not Setites, Erosite, they're the Kui Jin. Yeah. I understand the reference because the Setites have snake powers. The Kui Jin are snakes. But this lady has a snake theme. And it'll make a lot of sense later, but Cobra! she's not. She's an animorph. <laughs> yeah, she's she's Alex Mack. Um, yeah, she turns into liquid nitrogen. Um, cool. All right, let's do some fucking shoutouts and call it an episode. Tux Rodamius, hello, sir. Yo, everybody! Thank you for hanging out with us tonight. An uh, awesome episode of Elliot Night. Yeah. Yeah, uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hope you come back for some more. Uh, I'm Tux. You can find me on all the places at slash Tux I do a bunch of uh, stuff, uh, role playing stuff there and here and everywhere. And uh, yeah, thanks again for hanging out with us. Cool, bruh. Speaking about a cool, bruh, let's go on over to Mr. Spooty. What up, sir? What cool, is happening, bruh. everybody? Uh, tonight was fun. A good little episode. Can't wait to uh, learn about snakes next week. Nice. And beat Rodney in war. <laughs> Everyone put on your fucking sunglasses, because we're going to talk about Dr. Wreckage. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, please join us later in the week for Dead Man's Crest. Uh, hopefully that's uh, all gonna pan out. We still haven't fucking figured out that goddamn system, but having a good time being pirates. I hope you enjoyed vampires, and I hope you will join us again next week for more vampires. Uh, thanks again to Erosito in the chat, uh, as always, for his amazing uh, uh, art and fan art. Um, the uh. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry about the interruption tonight, um, but uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty stoked for doing this Kui Jin arc. I'm pretty stoked for you guys figuring out like stuff about the Kui Jin. Uh, maybe you'll just fucking avoid the whole thing though. That's always possible. If you do, there's plenty of arcs that come after the Kui Jin arc. I've got LA at night, pretty much locked for like eighty more episodes. <laughs> like, I mean, nice. Yeah. So um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know when we'll hear back from um, uh, Tuesday about whether or yeah, not she's going soon. to be rejoining us. But um, you know, yeah. Um, but uh, hey, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Uh, take your sunglasses off now because we're gonna do some shilling. Um, yeah, uh, if you haven't already done so, guys, consider following the channel. And if you're feeling real saucy, why not subscribe? Get access to the cockpit and the best emotes on Twitch. Um, yeah, as mentioned before, we've got a couple of things coming up. Uh, one of them is a brand new game. Um, I'm just going to meet Tux real quick while he's typing. Oh, it's not Tux. It's Dr. Red. It's me. Oh, my God. Fucking guy. Um, <laughs> I'm going to... Uh, yeah, we, we've got... Uh, tomorrow is Die Party Abyss, which is a Hollow Earth Expedition role-playing game. If you like Pulp... If you hate Nazis, if you like punching said Nazis, that's the game for you. It's a fantastic cast and crew. Um, Dead Men's Crest on Wednesday, as Wreckage mentioned. Uh, then we have the very first episode of Die Party Surge. It's The name's changed a couple of times since we've uh, come into the uh, the whole thing with this game. But, uh, you know, it is a Shadowrun game set in... Um, uh, where did I set it? Uh, Denver, right? Denver, yeah. Denver, which is like... A meeting ground of five different like con uh, countries within the former United States of America. It's fucking weird, dude. It's it's fucking so weird, but it's gonna be awesome. 
Uh, I can't wait for that. That's um, Shadowrun, um, Shadowrun Anarchy, which is a more narrative-focused version of Shadowrun. It's actually really good. I like the system a lot. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to play that one. And Friday, uh, we have uh, Board Games with Beta Grow... Beer, blah, 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 board, board Games with Beta Bros Regrowth. Uh, not sure what we're playing yet. We'll, we'll come up with that pretty soon. Um, and then Embers on Sunday. Uh, but yeah, as mentioned, we, we are looking at building a um, fan game, fan party, uh, which is like a die party fan day where we, uh, um, I guess, play 24 hours worth of uh, role playing games and get a bunch of people coming and, you know, having a session, quick sesh, you know, should be good, should be good. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much it. I had a great time tonight. And I would like to thank all of my friends for coming and joining us and my, my cast and crew for joining us and portraying amazing characters. <laughs> all right, that's pretty much it. Anyways, guys, have a good one. We outie. Bye-bye.